Okay, let's do this. All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome to uh, Sir Hunt's Reviews. My name's Mark, and I have a very special guest joining me. Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, kind sir? How's it going, everybody? My name is The Atomic Dom from The Atomic Dom YouTube channel. All right, so what we are going to do is break down this Game of Thrones Season 7 trailer uh, in depth if that's a word. Uh, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and play it real quick. There will be no audio, but we'll just kind of chat about it first, and then we'll get into uh, four things that we want to talk about, and then we'll start taking questions. But uh, without any further ado, there is, it's rolling now. Can you see it, by the way? Enemies to the yeah, west. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Um, all right. Enemies to the west. So, yes, it, it's like, south. I've seen it probably like... This will probably be like the 27th the time I've watched it. So I may not sound like it, but I am actually, you know, like still on edge from it. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I know what you mean. It, is, it was like the first time I saw it, I was I was actually, it was everything I wanted and more. And I'm glad we didn't see too much about the, uh, the, the white wolf. It just lets us know that there's so much more to come. I was born Hell yeah, a lot of people were saying, where was, you know, where was Euron or where was Gendry or whoever. Actually, that's something, someone, I had seen a few comments on my video, people were saying that they actually had noticed uh, Gendry in the, in the trailer. Supposedly when John is walking, it's coming up, when he's with this group, you know, north of the wall, supposedly you can see the shape of a war hammer. Really? Yeah, I think I just saw it, and that looked like a lacrosse stick to me. I don't know. <laughs> He's like, hey man, you never know. Might want to start playing lacrosse, and then they hope this white one. Um, or maybe it's just part coming up. Okay. Okay, I didn't see it. <laughs> I didn't see it at all. All you, all you can see was John. Here, I'll go back a bit. All you can see is John. I don't know about you, but I just saw Yeah. The Great Wall. Is I have to give that closer inspection, but you know, I mean, from everything we've heard, it does look like Gendry may reappear this season. Who knows? Hell yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, I kind of want to. I don't know. I don't really want to mention too much on that because that might be spoilery. And you know, we're getting a lot of people coming back now that are going to be yeah, watching okay. that don't know anything about. Of course. You know what I mean? Um, all right, so yeah, so the first thing, hang on, sorry, this is a little bit confusing for me. I'm trying to figure everything out um, using OBS. Shout out to King McKay, what's up? Shout out to, oh yeah, I forgot to do this. Shout out to Ivan Shishmanov, shout out to the Atomic Dom, he's actually here with me right now. Uh, and shout out to Sam Foggin, he's like Janice Slint's uh, number one fan. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Sam? <laughs> um, all right, so yeah, the first thing that we shall start talking about is this burned hand right here i don't know if you guys can see this but this uh now could be a number of of, of different things <clears throat> my initial impression was victorian Greyjoy. after further analysis i looked at the shirt and i compared it with the color of jorah's shirt from last season which to be honest with you jorah was kind of wearing like a yellowish like goldish shirt he's pretty much been wearing the same thing the whole series but uh, you can't you honestly can't really make a strong determination from that because there's hardly any light in this image Like you can't really see the color of the shirt. You know, it's like a lighter color, but it could be any any color Honestly, what I think this might be is and I'll let Dom explain what he thinks it is um, in a second But I think that this is actually One of two things one it could be a white that's captured because John has to show proof you know to the rest of Westeros, and yes, that was in the plot leak, but also it's just common sense because people like Cersei and, you know, maybe even Daenerys herself might not believe shit like that. Or it could actually be someone uh, who was burned, like, during the first initial battle between Cersei and Daenerys, and maybe it's one of Cersei's... It could, honestly, it could be Jaime. It could be anyone because it looks like they're in a box being a prisoner, and the, the, the burn on their hand could actually be... I mean, you know, it looks like grayscale... Honestly, I'm going to pass the mic over to you, man. What do you think? Who do you think this is? And what do you think this hand is? Honestly, I think that's 100% Jorah moment. Um, it's the first thing I really thought when I saw it. I did think, I did I did like the thought that it could be Victorian uh, just because of the book stuff, but it, would, it wouldn't make any sense to introduce the character now. Um, that to me is Grayscale. 
um, and what it would look like. Um, I don't know where he is. I don't know what the situation is for him being captured or trying to reach through this door with the latch. It does look like he's a prisoner in the photo. But yeah, if I'm being um, brutally honest, that to me looks like grayscale and it looks like Jorah hasn't found a cure as many of us maybe hoped or thought that he would do. Yeah, it, okay, yeah, see, I, I think, you know, now after listening to you a little bit, I think it does kind of look like grayscale. Uh, one of the comments that had actually intrigued me was yesterday was, uh, by the way, thank you for everyone joining us right now. I'll do shout outs again in a second. But I think uh, what this could be is Sam could have gone somewhere to like the Citadel and the way that they treat grayscale is basically by burning it off. And maybe that's why it looks like the reason why I think it's a burn is because it's super dark and it could be dark because we know grayscale. We've seen them. Uh, what is, was it? Season five when uh, Jorah and... Tyrion were making their way through Old Valyria, you know, we saw a close-up of it, and honestly, it looked like it was lighter than this, but it could appear darker just because there's not much light in the in this scene, like, they're inside of somewhere. So it could be that grayscale, I just think it's a burn, because it looks like you can see exposed flesh in between the, like, little scalings, you know, and it looks almost like it's red, irritated, and burned almost. You know what it looks like to me? To me, it looks like he's wet. And I don't know if it's just because the the, the arm of the clothing looks damp, or because if you look at the fingertips, it kind of looks, there's like a reflection. There's just like a slight reflection there as if it's been, as if his fingers are dripping. So maybe he, maybe it's something to do with one of the naval battles that we've seen in the trailer or something. But to me, that looks like, oh, or maybe he's just been, his fingertips. Yeah, it just looks a bit, uh, it looks a bit like, um, I don't know, he's been, he's been pulled out of the water maybe. And, but it, it still to me does look like, uh, grayscale and I still do believe it's Jorah but I'm thinking maybe he for some reason is soaking wet there yeah I kind of I never even I didn't really notice the water at the end of the fingertips I like that um holy shit there's 31 people watching us right now that's awesome all right so if you guys everyone just tuning in welcome and make sure you click the I think it's like the third link down in the description that'll take you straight to the Atomic Doms channel and you can go subscribe he just did a face reveal yesterday so y'all can see what he looks like <laughs> I honestly you know not trying to sound any way um hopefully you won't take this the wrong way but you kind of look like one of my homeboys from over here bro <laughs> like I was like I was like he does not honestly I don't know maybe it's the wife beater I think it was the wife beater because I was like yo he looks like he's from the south side and then I was like who is it did, did, did? I was crazy but yeah make sure you guys go check out his channel and subscribe um and also please type in the chat who do you think this could be do you think this is Jorah do you think that this is Victorion do you think that this is a prisoner who was burned uh severely maybe like Jamie or something in that initial battle between Cersei and Daenerys and Daenerys is keeping them in sort of like a makeshift prison or do you think that this is in fact Jora, and he's his grayscale has gotten insane, and maybe he went, uh, you know, going a little bit of plot leak stuff here, but maybe he went, you know, to Old Town, and this is the way the Maesters are treating it, like they they basically put him in his own isolation chamber, you know. I like that, Ivan. If you look at Ivan in the chat, he's just said it's Jora. He was hiding in Danny's ship. <laughs> I really like that. I like that too. See, I think that's what Dario Naharis is doing. I think Dario is a fucking stowaway, and uh. he may or may not have, you know, just abandoned his second sons. But I honestly think that he will be popping back up. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, that, that, yeah, that would be cool to see. I like that too. That's a, he said he was hiding. Well, I like that. I just don't know <laughs> if he would do that because remember she wanted him to. Obviously, she didn't want him to stay around after she found out he got grayscale, but she wanted him to, you know, kind of be with her. It honestly looked like she might try to let old man smash. Nah, nah, nah. You, nah. Don't, you, know what? you don't think he <laughs> nah. could ride the dragon, bro? Come on. We all know girls like that. But she, was, she wasn't she was letting him anywhere near. But <laughs> I do think – I wouldn't be surprised if he stayed on the ship, if he, if he stayed to be close to her, because maybe he's just come to the – maybe he just understands, look, there isn't a cure. He's not going to find a cure, and Daenerys doesn't maybe get that so maybe he just thinks to himself instead of wasting time going to try and find a cure for this disease i mean shireen was cured sure but i mean stannis is you know he was the brother of a king who was able to bring in all these different people and stuff like that this i don't think um jorah i think i don't think jorah went to find the cure maybe he did i like this idea maybe he did stay close to daenerys what do you think i uh, I mean, I think the reason why we, I mean, obviously it's the same in the books, you know, Shireen has it somewhat, not necessarily cured, but manageable, like they stopped it from spreading. 
So that's right. Yeah. I think that since Jora hasn't had it that long, I think that that's why, you know, they they took the time to show us that also, uh, is that there's just a potential for him to get cured somehow, and I think maybe it. Uh, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. <laughs> It's cool though. It's a cool shot. It's a really, it's a really evocative shot. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a hundred percent on that. I put money on that. That that is Jora. Hell yeah! All right, so look, uh, we're not gonna sit here and white knight each other the whole time. You're saying that <laughs> Jora. I'm saying, I'm saying that um, just to be different. You know, I do think it's Jora. Like I put in my uh, initial breakdown, but I'm just to be different. I'm gonna say that that's a white that was burned by a dragon, and you know. It's being held captive to show the rest of the kingdom what the fuck they're facing. But they don't know, just like back in season one, I think it was, where the uh, the Lord Commander, G.R.R. Mormont, sent the hand down to King's Landing, and by the time it got there, it was just a hand. I think that, that might they might try to be doing the same thing, except for they're going to take an entire white and show them. But it may backfire. I don't know. I don't know. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so next up is this is this is honestly one of the most provocative things I've noticed. That everyone is kind of has different ideas about this. I'm gonna go ahead and say that that is in fact Casterly Rock, and that the Unsullied have sacked Casterly Rock. The reason why I say that is because that doesn't look like anything that we've seen in King's Landing. King's Landing, like when we're looking at the Red Keep, it's pretty spacious. That looks to be sort of like cramped quarters. And honestly, everyone's saying, you know, like we saw that Cersei had changed the emblems on the windows behind her. You know, we got that picture from the throne and it was a casterly lion back there, or a casterly lion. It was a lion, you know, <laughs> like for her family. And she changed that around. But if you look up top, dude, it kind of looks like that the painting in that L, like the paint is chipping. So almost as if it's been there for a while. So what do you think? Do you think that that is Casterly Rock or do you think that this is uh, King's Landing? Um, I think that it is Casterly Rock. I think that it's Casterly Rock or that it's a some kind of maybe Lannisport or something, you know, something Lannister controlled. I don't think it's King's Landing. Um, it, it's going to be amazing to see Casterly Rock because it is one of the it's like one of the only major locations that we haven't yet been to on the show. Um, but yeah, I just think I think by the way the um, heraldry is um, depicted, it looks like it's been there a while. It does look like um, the architecture is slightly different than what we've seen in King's Landing. Yeah, it's just um, like those yeah. those those archways. You know, like those first archways. Like we haven't seen anything that you know. It just looks. I don't know. No, it's true. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 very um, it's not it, it's a bit more baroque than the stuff that we see in King's Landing, and I, and I think that this is somewhere we haven't been before. So yeah, Lannisport maybe just because of the um the fact that a lot of Daenerys's power is um seaborn, so uh, maybe that's how the Unsullied, uh, maybe that's how she brings them there. Um, but yeah, either Casterly Rock or Lannisport. I don't think that that is King's Landing. All right, yeah, so we agree with that. Yeah, we both think, I think that, oh, wait, no, yeah, no, we do, we do. Okay, so I'm backtracking yeah. myself. Sorry, I started reading the chat. Um, All right, but yeah, so we got 43 people watching right now, but we only have 10 likes. What's going on with that? Let's see if you guys can slap a like on this video because you want to show some some, uh, some love and some support to uh, me and the Atomic Dom. But I do want to comment real quick. I, I'm glad that, that the Unsullied have upgraded their armor. Uh, You know, those little outfits they were wearing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, over in Essos were cute, but they were not, you know, any kind of battle prepared. You, I could stab them about 57 different ways to sundown with that, you know, that little light leather armor they were rocking. Yeah, they're looking a lot cooler now. They, I mean, it's winters here. They can't go around in those um, sleeveless vests anymore. Hell yeah. Hey, just for just for audience sake and my own sake um, here, uh, can we can we get a winter is coming or can we get a winter is here rather? Or for me, yeah, with your with your accent, sir. All of these lovely people love it. I'm sure because you know, well, <laughs> um, winter is here. Uh, winter is coming. All right. I can't really do the, I can't really do the northern accent, which is more like winter is coming. There which you is go. Like there a, you go. That's yeah. what I was looking for. I was trying to look for. Uh, I was trying to <laughs> trying to look for you know like a more dramatic way. But look, here's mine. Winter is coming. I like that. I like that a lot. That's very um that's very north. <laughs> Hell yeah, John Snow son. Oh yeah, by the way, speaking of northern England, uh real quick, I want to give like you guys are in my prayers anyone uh who ha was affected by that tragedy at the Ariana Grande concert. I know this is off topic, but that it, that is insane and it sucks that that would happen to anyone. And like I said, you're 
whoever was affected by that, you're in my prayers. It's crazy, yeah. It's it's it has rocked the country, and it is um, it's just it's just like it's just monstrous. There's not really anything else you can you can say about that. It's but thank you because it is it is something that has affected everybody. Yeah, I know. Um, you know, just personally, like how we still, you know, we still talk about stuff that happens over here all the time. This is kind of getting me down. All right. Um. So yeah. Uh, did you have any more comments? Um. That you wanted to make about like whether this is Lannisport slash King's Landing. This no, I think we're I think we're both in accordance here. I think we both agree. There's there's the if you look at the bottom left of the photo, there is a dead guy there. Yeah, and, definitely um, he's rocking the Lannister Reds too. <laughs> I think so. I mean, now I can't tell if that's just the blood <laughs> or if there is actually red on the costume, but no, either there way, is. that there is. Yeah, okay, cool. I was gonna say either way, it doesn't look like anyone I've seen in. Uh, any co- any um armor or anything that I've seen in King's Landing. That's a really good point, dude. And that that I'm glad that you said that because it looks like he's actually wearing almost like a uh, like a cloak with, and then with with an armored vest over top of it. So that could be there. There we go, right there. You might make me switch to. Wait, no, we both agreed it was Lannisport. Okay, so yeah, that could be the dead giveaway. The fact that the guards are dressed differently at Casterly Rock because that's the home of the Lannisters. So maybe they aren't as heavily armored as they would be in King's Landing, which would. Make all the more sense of how the Unsullied are just able to sweep through there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And it'll be good. It's going to be awesome to see the Unsullied really attack as a force. Because up until now, we've seen them as kind of, I won't say the underdogs. But we've not seen them really storm a city as a, as a, as a, as an army, you know? So that's going to, we've, obviously we've seen them go through those, the back routes and through the streets and stuff. But it'll be awesome to see them as a major force really break it into a, a stronghold and, well, wreaking havoc. Hell yeah. I honestly I think, you know, with this we we have a bigger budget and honestly the only CGI we've really noticed from the trailers were you know, the dragons. We saw the dragons I think twice. We saw Daenerys riding on Drogon once and then we saw another shot of all three of them kinda of taking off where Tyrion was on the cliff. I, I hope that the rest of that budget, if it's not being used for so much CGI, that it went into hiring more extras to make these armies look more, you know, like insane. Yeah. Oh, 100%. 100. Like that, that would be incredible. Actual people, you know what I mean? Definitely, definitely. I think, uh, honestly, I think we will be getting, like, almost, I don't want to say it, like, in sound, like I'm getting too far ahead of myself, but I honestly think we'll be getting, every time there's a skirmish or a battle, it will be somewhat like the Battle of the Bastards, you know what I mean? Because they had, that was, like, one of the most intense scenes filmed, not only for uh, Game of Thrones, but for all of TV history. You know what I mean? It took like the longest to film that. I think it was like six to eight weeks or some shit. Um, but yeah. yeah. Uh, no, let's I, see. I agree. They've only got seven episodes this year, haven't they? So a lot of that budget that would have been um, put towards three extra episodes can go into the actual action set pieces, which would be cool to see. Hell yeah. Not only is it a shortened season, but also the budget increases. You know what I mean? So not only exactly. do they have less episodes to work with, but they also have even more money than last year. So with that, I hope that they put some of that into you know, these, these battle scenes and these armies making it look like, let's see, I, I think um, this is also off topic, but I remember last season, uh, Jamie, when he first got to River Run, he actually marks uh, marches into the Frey's camp, and he's like, you just let 5,000 men march in here uh, and take mm-hmm. this over. And then afterwards, we saw Jamie go back to King's Landing with those 5,000 men. So if that's being said, it should be really, with that being said, it should be really easy for the Lannisters to overtake Casterly Run, Casterly Run, Casterly Rock, because they, Jamie has most of the troops that would have normally been stationed somewhat around there. You know, he has them all in King's Landing. So maybe... Oh, so yeah, it'll be easy for the Unsullied to come in. And, and I really want to see, now that you said that, I really do want to see the Lannister army in action because they're like one of the greatest military forces in Westeros and we've seen so little of them so far yeah obviously there was like snippets during Rob's rebellion but nothing major so I really do want to see what they can bring to the table this season as well hell yeah and uh, now that you said that that reminds me their new shields look badass but I like how the <laughs> Lannisters are the only ones that are willing to put that expensive ass shit into their shields <laughs> and not into like I don't know hiring more men or you know something more useful because if you look at these Dothraki shields they look like giant boobs with nipples you know what I mean like <laughs> they get the job done they they just they don't they're not glamorous there's no Targaryen dragon on them it's just like we're yeah. here to do one job you know what I mean yeah exactly I like it 
And I think that, like I was saying, I think that, that that's what makes – I think we'll get a scene like Varys will get his little birds um, to do their work. You know, obviously – uh, you guys can check out my... There's actually a link in the description. I actually did a uh, breakdown of Varys, but Varys has been growing his spy network since he first arrived in King's Landing. So that's years, and what he does is he buys them um, so that they're almost like... The, he, they're all orphans, and he buys them. So that's how they're employed to him, but he also gives them treats, and he treats them really well. I'm sure he treats them uh, more well than, you know, uh, Kyburn. And we even yeah. hear one of them asked for varies like when is master varies returning so honestly i think he's going to come back sneak in through those little tunnels underneath uh the red keep and then get in contact with one of them and have them do their their research on cersei's army then he's going to find out that hey look she's got 5k strong in the city don't bum rush the city let's try to cut them off where they're going to run to next and i have been making this fucking prediction since season six ended that cersei will in fact flee from king's landing and run to casterly rock with news that Castle Rock is sacked, that might keep her in the city, but I think that's how we were going to get to see Castle Rock. And now that they released this trailer and we're looking at this image right here, I think this kind of confirms. Look, Castle Rock, it's going down. Cersei is going to be up the A this season. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, let me get your opinion on that r real quick. Do you think that that's what they spent their extra money in the budget for, as to like make the battle scenes look more intense by hiring like real extras, or do you think they put it more into like the costume department because we're getting to see? I think it's going into everything. I think it's going into making everything bigger. So we're going to see more dragons. We are going to see more extras and battle scenes because it's war now. You know, everything's here. Daenerys is here. There's no more padding and filler and waiting for her to get there. She's here with. <clears throat> excuse me, a shit ton of Dothraki's unsullied three dragons. We've got ships. We, we need naval battles because of Euron. We've got um, White Walker stuff happening north of the wall. It's like the culmination of everything we've been watching all these years. All those couple of episodes a season that really stand out. I think we're going to have standouts every episode. I really do. I think it's going to be a very quick build into a crescendo where everything's going down. And I think we're really going to see that budget uh, come into play early on. Hell yeah. I think I, I agree with you. I think that it probably went into a little bit of everywhere, but I think that they did spend a, a pretty reasonable amount on costumes because everybody's got, you know, they've got souped. And we were actually saying that in our um, podcast. Remember when we were talking about the pictures, how everyone's looking like GQ and shit this season? <laughs> yeah yeah there you go it's crazy i saw the recent ones as well there's a lot of uh there's a lot of i think it was, it was the starks that all got to back together again that was pretty cool to see <laughs> hell yeah oh yeah those new images from ew god they want to make yeah. our work dude as youtubers insane like i already have three <laughs> videos planned for this fucking trailer and then now they release more excuse my language and now they release more of you know, images. Honestly, it's the Starks, and if I didn't video, do a video on, on you know, these new Starks images, yeah, they're behind the scenes, but honestly, Arya's costume has a lot to, you know, it's got a lot to speak for itself. <sighs> I don't know. Um, Yeah, I see that. I see that. Sh uh, shout out. <laughs> Smokahana says, I have my tinfoil on. Here's some yeah. tinfoil for you. Let's go back a little bit here. Um, okay. This burned arm is actually uh, Victorian and Euron has been keeping him prisoner because I don't know. That's as far as tenfold I can get. I, I just yeah, I just yeah. hope that's Victorian. All right, so uh, moving things along here a little bit. The next thing that I wanted to talk about was your boy Gregor's armor. Now, honestly, um, I'm gonna pass it to you in a second here, but I people have been complaining about this. They say that it looks cooler than uh. Or it looks worse than his last armor. Honestly, I think this one is makes more sense because he's going to be facing off against a lot of people. And it just, I don't know, he's got more protection with this. His helmet, no, I'm not going to be honest. His helmet looks like super silly. Like super, super silly. It's like a combination of like a samurai with like, I don't know, like a dragon's head or some shit. I don't know. What do you, what do you think about this? Yeah, it looks weird. Um, <laughs> mainly because it... <laughs> It does fit in with the theme of Cersei's new dark clothes that every like everybody I, every woman that I know that watches Game of Thrones was in love with her outfit last season at the end. But I don't think that that needs to translate over to the mountain. The the, the helmet, especially, yeah, it does look a bit daft. Um, but you know, I mean, I guess they they're just trying to 
bring them all into like <sighs> I don't really know to be honest with you. I, I'm not sure why it looks so drastically different from anything that we've seen in Westeros so far. You know, it it, it looks more like something you might find in Essos that helmet especially. So yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of, of the armor, but um well it can, it kind of looks similar to the previous Lannister uh, helmets it's the like, way that they stuck out, you know, so far in front of their yeah, face. Yeah, in, in shape but not in design if you know if 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 yeah. I'm articulate myself properly. It kind of looks it looks a bit too um flamboyant, you know. <laughs> like <laughs> Like, like he's like yeah i back the the iron queen and what <laughs> yeah yeah so I, it's like i'd like it if it was on any if it was like another show or something <laughs> i'd like um a different character i'd probably like it but yeah for the mountain it just seems a bit um i don't know it looks a bit it looks a bit strange to me but who knows like in motion um and when he's in actually like in, like when he's actually doing fighting scenes and stuff it might it might look a lot better I feel you. I think uh, I think what throws me off is the emblem on his chest. You know, that kind of, it almost looks like it's just like a bunch of bullshit. Like, that's not the Lannister line. Like, what is that? Is that the Iron Throne? What is that? Like, everyone... Yeah, when I first saw that, it reminded me of um, the Gondorian armor from Lord of the Rings. Oh, shit. I was shit. like, oh, my God. That... <laughs> you know what I mean? Some Tolkien references. <laughs> and I thought, that's Gondor armor. Because, you know, they've got the white tree and everything. Mm -hmm. And when you Knights, some I think it's the ones that are guarding the uh, the tree, and they've got like the black on the white on black, and that's what it reminded me of the first time I saw it. I was like, that looks like Gondorian armor to me, but um, I'm not quite sure what that image, what that emblem is on his chest as well. I'm, I was trying to work it out for a while, and I just it looks a bit, it looks like a bit of a hot mess. <laughs> let me uh, <laughs> let me read some of these people, some of the people's comments in the chat. Oh. <laughs> Penis uh, Rob Plant says it looks like a bell end. <laughs> uh, Jedi Master Cheryl said it looks like a penis head. <laughs> um, and Julie said it looks like Mar uh, Mario's mushroom hat. Um, Rob Plant said it looks like the one villain from SpongeBob. Ray West said, are you sure that's the mountain? That's definitely the mountain. Hey, you that's know what? Honestly, uh, no one's really said anything about it, but who the fuck is he looking at? Who is this in the foreground? He looks like he's staring them down. We know it's not Jamie. Um, the only think, person that I know wears a jacket like that is Euron Greyjoy. This is the mountain staring down Euron. Like, this was one of those things that I was going to probably make a video on, but screw it. Let's talk about it here right now. This is actually, in my opinion, Euron, you know, in that one image that we had from the trailer where Cersei and Jaime are having someone walk in front of them. I was like, yeah, that's definitely when Euron presents himself um, as, like, an ally to Cersei. I think that's what it is, and I think... This is him sizing up the mountain. I think Euron is looking at him funny. You can, honestly, I'll go back and I'll try to do it. Um, or so, maybe someone can link in the chat, but a picture of what Euron's outfit was last season. But he was wearing a jacket similar to this, and it's it's similar to what the Ironborn wear. It's like a, uh, almost like it's got like these little knobs that stick out on it. I guess it's like sea clothing. I don't really know how to describe it. You know what I mean? It's sea, it's um, clothing for seamen. Like if you're... <laughs> Holy shit! Did I really just say that? Oh my god! It's a it's a clothing it's like clothing for someone who's at sea a lot. I I, um, I knew I was gonna say that before I said it, but I just kept going with it anyway. Um, um I I didn't think of it. I didn't I didn't even consider who he was looking at until you just mentioned it. Um, but I like the like the way the head is cocked. Mm -hmm. Kind of does it like somebody sizing him back up as well. And if there's anybody that wouldn't be afraid of the mountain, it's your on Greyjoy, isn't it? Hell yeah, um, he's insane. That's it. Yeah, I mean, he's he's got that um, that attitude that basically he he thinks he's uh, the big I am and he's planned everything out. And I kind of want to see a lot more of you around this season because he's been woefully underused so far. So it would be cool to like him and Cersei. That's a pretty that's a pretty fearsome team, you know. Hell um, yeah, that's but, like probably one of the like most powerful couples, you know ever yeah like right i mean they could do some damage i mean a lot of people obviously are under underestimating um uh cersei in her hand at the moment and obviously i do think she's going to lose in the end but i think that all of the this cool stuff that we're seeing with daenerys on her dragon and burning people and in, in, in battle and all of this and that unsullied storm in Ladisport, i think that that could be a bit of a red herring um to get us all like pumped up and then to make it hurt and hit harder when uh, maybe Cersei and Euron come out on top. Who knows? 
Hell yeah. Um, I just got a request from the chat. Winter is coming. Or wait, 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 hang on. Winter is here, and the dead come with it. <clears throat> that was my, my voice is getting raspy. I like doing the Alistair Thorne. You know the Alistair Thorne. He's like, Jon Snow is no Lord Commander of mine. Jon Snow is... Wait, no, nah, he doesn't say snow like that. He says snow like snow. John Snow. Yeah, I don't know. All right, but yeah. <laughs> uh, get, us, get get me sidetracked there. But yeah, no, nah, uh, Super Tinfoil, what if this is Arya? You know, Arya actually is wearing a similar jacket to that. What if Arya is sizing up the mountain, and the mountain could tell something is off about her because she's pretending to be someone in the court? And he's like, uh, there's something a little bit off about this bitch. And then, you know, this is Tinfoil. Remember, I told you to place those on. What if Arya then you know, tries to attack the mountain and fails miserably. And then I don't know what happens after that. I kind of lost it. Yeah, I think that is a bit tinfoil, but you never know. It is Game of Thrones. Anything could happen. I think I think Arya would be daft to, <laughs> to even go back there because, you know, Cersei would recognize her, wouldn't she? Hell, well, yeah, she did. Yeah, she did see him that one time. Unlike Tywin, Tywin never actually saw her. Honestly, I think Tywin knew that was her, man. What do you think? Oh, yeah, I think, I think so. I've always thought that. I've always thought that... I mean, in the books, it's not Tywin, so you can't make any direct parallel because mm-hmm. it's not, it's um, it's actually Roose Bolton in the books. But in the show, and it's, I always it's suspected... Gene Poole too. It's not even Arya. That's right. That's right. But in the um, in the in the show, I've always suspected. The only thing that makes me think maybe he didn't know was that he, Arya is a valuable political pawn. exactly, and he would have yeah. Yeah, maybe you know Tywin's a very shrewd man. I'm sure he would have he would have made sure that she stayed put. Exactly. I think maybe he thinks that she was just a northern like a northern lord's daughter, and she was just pretending, you know, because he does say, uh, "Lowborn say me lord," you know what I mean? And she kept saying "my lord." So. Yeah, there you go. Um. All right. So yeah. Uh. Real quick before we move on to the next one. Uh. What do y'all think this emblem is? Honestly, it kind of looks like the Iron Throne. Mixed with, I, I want to say the Kraken for House Greyjoy. I don't know what the f- it is, but it mm. looks like it's the Iron Throne, and it looks like the crown is wrapped up in that. I think it's just something Cersei came up with, because those are definitely Could not be. Lannister lions on his shoulder pads. You know, that's the Could, same emblem. Could that emblem on the chest be the destruction of the Sept? Holy shit. I don't even do need my tenfold cat for that one. <laughs> what do you think? Yo, and that's like that's when she came to power, so that could be like yeah. her, dude. And then it's like the sept of Baylor. Oh, what the fuck? I see the faith of the seven crown in the right? center, and then everything coming off of it is wildfire explosions, dude. Yeah, Holy... right. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Could be. Could be. Yeah, because it's the same emblem on his shoulder, too. Those aren't the lion, the Lannister lions. Like, maybe she has, maybe that's just her Queen's Guard emblem, you know? And yeah, it's to like, like, remind people, like, don't fuck with me. I'll blow Sorry you the fuck language. up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll add you to my wall of emblems so that yeah. you can, you know, look like this. <laughs> what, do you guys, what do you guys in the chat think of that emblem? Do you reckon that could be the, uh, the Sept? Let me know what you think. I don't know. I, I, it could Go be. It could subscribe be. to the Atomic Dom right now. See, this is the kind of shit that you miss out on if you aren't subbed to this channel. <laughs> oh, man. It's cool, though. It's cool. Hell yeah. I like that, dude. I like that. I think, honestly, you know, wrapping this up real quick, I'm going to read over. I'm trying to read over the comments in the chat right now for what you guys think of it. But I honestly think that it's it's either what Dom said it was, you know, like that's her version of what happened to the Sept of Baylor because honestly that's what makes the most sense it looks like we've got the faith of the seven crown in the center of that and what appears to be a jungled mess surrounding it or it's just <laughs> something she came up with herself but honestly I hope it's the Sept of Baylor because that oh that would add so much depth like she's she and she blatantly doesn't give a shit about her sleeping with Jamie like she literally gives no fucks anymore you know what <laughs> yeah I mean? that's that's it that's what's scary this season I guess I guess on another um tinfoil tangent it could be the new emblem that's giving to all her troops after she like marries euron could be that too. maybe maybe i just don't think she's going to marry euron um unless she maybe wants to really piss off jamie or something who knows but um we'll see i guess hell yeah um all right so real quick i'm gonna do some shout outs um let's see Okay, so active participants in the chat. 
I like Brian Gillies, the comment, it's Oberyn Martell's head exploding. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have Ilaria's scream. That's the sound around. That's like the sound from Ilaria's scream. Like, ah! <laughs> All right. So shout out to Alpha Raptor Hunter. Shout out to Brian Gilly. Shout out to Claudio Castro. Shout out to DeAndre Richardson. Shout out to Gecko. Shout out to Israel Shantez. Sanchez. Shout out to Ivan Shishmanov. Shout out to Jamie Lambert. Shout out to Jedi Master Cheryl. Shout out to Ray West. Shout out to Rob Plant. I was about to say shout out to Sir Hunt's reviews, but that's me. Um, and shout out to Tom Fed. Um, all right, so yeah, you guys type in the chat what you think that that emblem on the mountain's chest reminds you of, or what you could actually think it is. And uh, we're gonna move on to this next one, but I'll I'll come back to those and read those out loud in a second. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to discuss was Jon Snow north of the wall and. Who the fuck is he running from? Honestly, it looks like his group is scattered, like, across. You know, we see those guys in the back left corner. Yeah. You know, they, uh, they appear to be, for the most part, running chaotically. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so I think that they have gone north of the wall to – it's like a it's, – it's a scouting party. Like, it's a ranging party. And that's not just because that's what the plot league says, but also that's just common sense. Jon Snow is going to have to – Get some numbers. Maybe, maybe Tormund tells John that there's more wildlings somewhere, you know, further up north, or maybe there's a reason why they have to go back. Like maybe he heard there was like an extra cast of dragon glass somewhere or some shit, and they're they're going to go get it. So maybe it's not necessarily what the plot leak says, but maybe it's something like that. What do you think? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I kind of agree completely because it's like, obviously, we don't know for sure, but. <sighs> It's hard to it's hard to say when they're north of the wall because it could be whites and it could be it, I, I don't think it would be like the Night King or anything like that, but um, uh, yeah, it, it, it's likely whites, isn't it? Or maybe like something we haven't seen, like the fabled ice spiders. Who knows? Oh, <laughs> oh, don't get me started on that, God. I would love to see those. That would be like that would that would literally like I say this a lot and this gets said a lot with Game of Thrones, but that would legit break the internet. That would break the internet. Yeah, that would be incredible. Could you imagine? Yeah, we would have never seen anything like that other than in another Tolkien reference here in a Lord of the Rings movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, you know, oh, we got a guy, um, Israel Sanchez in the chat says, one of the dudes in the back looks old and with gray hair like Davos. So that could actually, maybe Davos uh, went along with them for the uh, for the ranging trip. What do you think? Uh, I, I had seen a few people had made a comment on my video about that. I don't really think it's honestly easy enough to like this is not a clear enough resolution to tell oh, course, who any yeah. of those people are i i see what he's saying but i also could see that as instead of gray hair it could be someone who's bald and honestly if you look up front that almost looks like that's aria you know what i mean like the person who's in front of everyone except for john like in between him and him and Tori. yeah yeah you never know that would be because that would be awesome Hell yeah. <laughs> that aria's be like cool. fuck that big bro johnny i want to go with you john o <laughs> or like tom fed in the chat says davos and benjin now that would be cool to see john reunite with benjin i think that's one thing i really want to see i think that would hit home for me more than john reuniting with sansa because john did have a pre-existing relationship with benjin you know it's kind of, he's kind of the reason john wanted to go to the wall obviously there are Hell yeah. other it you know, yeah, John's exactly. gonna be like, "I'm not ready. I'm not ready, Uncle. I'm, I'm, I'm a fucking Lord Commander, son. <laughs> I'm not it took ready. me, it took me three seasons to become Lord Commander, too. And what? And what? <laughs> you know, when I went to my last music festival, just a bit of a tangent. Everybody was quoting that line that Jon Snow. You know, when he tells um Melisandre to leave. And he's like, if I if I see you in the north again, I'll have you hanged as a murderer. And everybody, it <laughs> so was so weird that again. because do there that was again. everybody that quoting that. That was sick, dude. That that was the impression I was looking for. Do that again. Um, oh, wait, is, it, is that? Oh, hold on. I don't know it verbatim, but he's like, I ride south. If I see you in the north again, I'll have you hanged as a murderer. <laughs> oh, see, that's the accent that I can't get. Right. Ride south. If I see you in the north, I'll have you hanged as a murderer. There you go. <laughs> all right, all right. But yeah, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, no, yeah, that was just a tangent anyway. But yeah, um, I don't know. I'd like to see John reunite with Benjamin because Benjamin's dope and we didn't see him for enough, you know, enough. And um, there's the whole cold hands theory. I do think that it was kind of ham-fistedly worked into the show, but it was good to see the character again. So if he's going to be in it, yeah, let's see him reunite with John. Honestly, there is no way in hell that Benjamin won't be in this next season. He, They didn't mm. show him dying. And he wasn't about to go die. You know, like he said, yeah. I've got work to do. I've still got to, you know, someone's got to fight the North of the Wall. So I think, if anything, we'll see him 
hopefully it's not to show back up and just be killed off like Dan and Dave are famous yeah. at you know kind of famous for doing <laughs> at this point but I honestly think that he still has you know stealing uh stealing from brother Ray the Lord of Light is not finished with him you know like there's still yeah. there's still work that needs to be done mm-hmm. yeah no I like that I like that a lot um all right so uh let's see real quick in the chat who or what do you think is making John run uh crazy like this and honestly another thing that i forgot then this why has no one said anything about john snow's purse do you see that he's got a fur purse like right around where his sword is like what are you going are you going shopping buddy what the fuck is that for you know what i mean like we can honestly out of all anal- analysis aside he's definitely north of the wall because he's wearing like furs that we've never seen him wear before in yeah. the North. you know what i mean yeah. so he's definitely john, north of the wall he's john got, got swag he went hot topic and he got himself a nice <laughs> He was, like, <laughs> he was like, yo, let me get this studded belt. Let me get this like satchel, <laughs> this fur satchel right here. I need this. I need this in my life right now. And but, then, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you now, if he's running from ice spiders, I'm gonna do like a shitload of shots on my channel. <laughs> do okay. like six shots and then go live stream, you're like, Whoa, what's up, yeah. everyone? <laughs> for, for every one of these for every one of these tinfoil theories that turns out to be true, I'll do like a shot of absinthe or something gross. <laughs> Hell yeah, I like uh, what Casper said. Casper said he's running from an explosion at the wall. I like that. Um, oh. And I will say one thing that, that I can like safely determine from this picture is that he's definitely wearing the fur jacket that Sansa made him because you can see, you remember that part? It was like a leather strap that goes across his chest, almost like yeah. a concealed carry uh, thing for guns or whatever. And it's got, you can yeah. tell that that's the wolf, the Stark wolf emblem on it. Definitely, definitely, yeah. He looks, he looks cool. This is like the coolest because I mean, obviously, we've only really seen him in black a lot um, in the last few seasons. So it's cool to see him, even though it is still kind of black, I guess, and just covered in snow. But it's cool to see him with a bit of like things that accentuate, uh, uh, you know, what I mean, his look. Yeah, being a true, like a true northern man. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Even, even though he was born in like pretty much as far south as you can go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. I tell you what, I like this. Jamie Lambert, a ba- it, that's a bag full of black obsidian. You never know. Hell yeah, no, that's what I was saying. Like that, that could have, that could have been what Tormund said. You know, there's a shit ton yeah. of this dragon glass right north of the wall. Let's go pick it up, and that's why John's yeah. got all that stuff on him. You know, they're going. That would be awesome. Guys. That would be awesome. Hell yeah. Um. All right. So honestly, I think, you know, we've pretty much covered the four major things that uh, I wanted to talk about. So I'm gonna drop this slideshow on you guys, um, and we'll just kind of, you know, just kind of take it uh as we as we as it goes but i will say that that image shit that's why i didn't want to do the slideshow it goes too quick uh but yeah no honestly from from watching the trailer multiple times and from your analysis like as a reviewer you know like you have a professional opinion honestly you have a youtube channel you know what i mean so from that like why do you think it is that they focused the first part of the trailer mainly on all things that are Lannisters and then the second half of the trailers was like Daenerys also but it, it was like the northern half do you think that the main battle is gonna be like the way that they're leading us to think is that the main battle will be between the south and the north when actually it's gonna be between Daenerys and the south or do you think Jon Snow is going to end up fighting off the Lannisters just so that he can get Daenerys to join him in the War for the Dawn. Do you think that's why they had the trailer like that? I don't think Jon Snow's going to fight the Lannisters at all. I think he's going straight north. Um, I think that most of the trailer, what we've seen is Targaryen Lannister War is um, going to be maybe the bulk of the season. Um, and all the other northern stuff will be a little bit more dramatic, maybe less action-packed um, uh, south of the wall like Winterfell um, but we'll see about all that because they didn't show the Hound or anything and we know he's heading that way um, and I think so we'll have action north of the wall and we'll have action down with Daenerys and uh, Cersei but um, just to make a quick analogy if you've ever read or uh, seen Lord of the Flies basically shit everything goes to hell <laughs> and there were all these kids fighting and whatever mm-hmm. and you're really that. engrossed in it uh, Yeah, and then an adult shows up at the very end and everyone's like oh shit and i think we're gonna have that oh shit moment here where everybody's fighting and everybody's deep in and daenerys is doing really well and then the night king will show up and i I think that's kind of going to be towards the end of the season and i think that's how the season's going to go so you think the wall's going to come down and then he'll yeah i I think i 
I've got a bet on this with a friend of mine for a hundred pounds, which is like a hundred and however many dollars. Um, I'm pretty certain it comes down this season. If it's the last episode, I don't know, but that wall's coming down. It has to, or Hell maybe yeah, not I like maybe, even if not the whole thing, like a portion of the wall. I think this season, like maybe the first five episodes, honestly, over half of it, I guess, because it's only seven. But the first mm-hmm. five episodes are going to mainly be focused on politics in Westeros and the little bullshit they have to get through to get ready for mm-hmm. the War for the Dawn. So I think that that's what's going to make the wall not come down until like the last episode. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, I like this in the comments about the Iron Bank. Do you think we're going to see a return from them this season? Definitely. I had actually uh, mentioned in one of my... <sighs> I keep doing self-promotion here, but I had did this video about uh, the Lannisters and like whether we'll get to see Castle Rock this, this uh, season. And I... Like used uh for reference like as a <clears throat> or a touchback point the conversation between tywin and cersei about the iron bank talking about how the iron bank always gets their due speaking of cersei that map is fucking amazing and that's definitely oh, in king's God, landing it's so cool it's yeah. so and cool. she's having it i know i'm getting sidetracked here i'm like a fucking mosquito well she's having it built or painted rather because she yeah. wants to plan out her attack strategy for war. And honestly, shout out to Tony Teflon. Go subscribe to him. But I, I was watching his breakdown, and he said he wasn't sure what it was. My nigga, as much as you know about you should be able to tell that that was Wes Rose, Tony Teflon. Come on. But, yeah, I think he ended, up, <laughs> he ended up correcting himself in the live stream. But, yeah. Um. Anyway, I think that that's why she's having that painted is because she knows... It's almost like a copycat. Like Daenerys, speaking of Daenerys, right there. At Dragonstone, she's actually got the old war table, you know, for mm-hmm. the entire kingdom. So I think that that's... And, and honestly, I think we're getting more images of Westeros so that the average show watcher, or the ASW as I call them, will have a, 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 a way to reference where the fuck these places are in Westeros. So like, yeah, you hear Dragonstone, but honestly, if you've never seen a map of Westeros, you don't know where the fuck Dragonstone is in comparison to King's Landing. So I think exactly. their way of sneaking that in is by showing, you know, we obviously got Stannis' old war room table. Well, I don't even want to call it his because it was never his to begin with. But the Targaryen, the old, his egg, old war egg on the, room. Egg on the Conqueror's war table. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and we've also got Cersei doing it so that we can see even more. They're trying to drill us in, a set, in our heads, okay, this is where this is, this is where that is, and that's where this is. But I think um, commenting on what you were saying earlier uh, about how you were saying, like, you know, it's going to be uh, pretty much like with the White Walkers coming at, towards the end of the season. I think I like that reference that you made. It's like, you know, we got a little bit of hint of that in the initial – uh, teaser that they gave us it was like Jon Snow at the end saying like it won't matter who sits in the yeah. Iron Throne you know what I mean yeah There's, he's not bothered I, I honestly don't see him going to war with I think Daenerys will court him and be like you have to back me or you know I mean I'll come for you but I don't think Jon cares <laughs> because like this is a man who's already died dealing with politics you know and all the stuff that you have to do to lead well now J- Jon's a simple man right <laughs> like Ned he needs like a, a a good guy and a bad guy. He's got a bad guy and he's going to go after the bad guy because it's the only thing that really does matter. And it seems like only he, Davos, and Melisandre are the ones that understand that. So maybe because if we in the trailer, don't forget Mel is in Dragonstone in the trailer. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if everybody catches that, but she's actually in Dragonstone, so she's likely to speak with Daenerys. Maybe she'll be able to convince her. But I think Daenerys's mind will be too focused on Cersei because you know having just come back to Westeros. Hell yeah. All right, so look, I kind of I kind of disagree with you a little bit. I think, I, well, I agree with you on certain parts. I think that John mm-hmm. will try to remain as impartial as possible, like not trying to get it dirty his hands too much in the affairs of Westeros unless it regards the North. But I do mm-hmm. think that he's going to have to win her favor somehow. And with that, I think he, she might strike a deal with him where she's like, okay, I need you to capture this keep and hold it for me, or I need you to do this first in order to secure the kingdom. I think he's going to have to. I, I think. But why? Like, why would he though? Because she's she's. It's like almost like what can he offer her? You know what I mean? Like yeah, he's got the north, and he's not going to kneel. He's definitely no, not going to bend the knee. Not going to kneel to her. No, I don't. I don't know why he'd do anything for her. To be honest with you. Well, I mean, they're going to need an, an, an allegiance, and I don't think Cersei, I don't think, um, I said Cersei because the thing popped up, but I don't think Daenerys is going to, I mean, she'll want, she'll definitely accept his help, but I think there's going to be sort of some give and take. I don't think she's just going to jet off mm. to up north, you know what I mean? I think he, I think John yeah. is going to have to do something to kind of win her favor. I see what you mean. Yeah, I, I, I honestly don't know that I'm, I think the north are going to get involved with the Targaryen and Lannister War. 
Um, but they may. I'm just not. I'm not convinced that they will. I think they'll have their own things to deal with um, in regards to the whites and everything. But you know, I could be wrong. I think I probably am wrong. I'm most. I'm most often wrong. But we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know. We're. I think that it'll be a combination of like basically we're both right. You know, like he won't yeah. do as much as a normal person would, but he'll also have to do something. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I get what you mean. Um, the next thing that I actually wanted to uh, talk about, I wanted to get your opinion on uh, how important will John Snow line- John Snow's lineage this will will it be this season, and will he find out, or how do you think he'll find out this season? Just um, I think I agree with the theory. I guess um, that Littlefinger will be the one that suggests it. I don't know that he'll come out and write and tell him because he never comes out right and tells anybody anything. But I think maybe li- that scene where he grabs up Littlefinger in the um, in the crypts, I think that could be after Littlefinger suggests that he's not Ned's son, so to speak, rather than he's explicitly stating that he's Rhaegar's son or he's Lyanna's da- uh, son. Um, so, yeah, I think that's how he's going to find out. Um, it wouldn't surprise me that both Littlefinger and Varys know because, you know, their business, their job is to know things. Um, so, yeah, I, that's how I think it will happen. What about, what about you? I think, uh, honestly, I've got like three or five million different ways that it could happen. But I think that it will be somewhat of importance. But I think the major thing that people uh, leave out, you know, a lot of people tend to focus on him finding out about it. But honestly, I don't think it's really that important. I think it is to us. But I don't think it is to him because it's still not going to change who he is. And that's That's honestly this image right here of him choking out Littlefinger. That's probably what just happened. Littlefinger probably snuck up on him like he normally does in the fucking crypts. And he started running his mouth about his Aunt Liana, (laughs) their dear Aunt Liana. And Jon Snow was like, fuck you, dude. You don't say shit. He's like, I don't want to hear anything coming out of your mouth. And then he hems him up. But uh, I'll just keep it short at that. I think it's, you know, like just what I said. I don't want to go in too much because I'll go on a tangent and then. You know, but uh, I did want to bring this up before I forget again. Um, Melisandre, uh, we kind of talked about it a little bit, but I want to go back to it. Melisandre is at Dragonstone, no doubt. And the question is, is why the fuck is she there? Because she's looking down at someone. It looks like it could be Jon Snow and his party, or it could be Daenerys. And my whole thing is, is Jon Snow sent her south. The only place that where she could think to go is home. Her home yeah, so was the Dragonstone. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, everyone's always asking me, and I honestly don't personally know. I guess I could research it, but I don't know who holds Dragonstone. But Lady Melisandre was a lady. She's not, I mean, she's technically affiliated with uh, Stannis. But, you know, whoever was left at the castle, honestly, I don't know. I think I think I had seen rumors it's like the Tyrells have it or something because it was given mm-hmm. to Mace Tyrell, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, may I mean, here's here's the thing. Okay, so Dragonstone is it, it may not come across in the show, but it's huge in in that relation to the Targaryen family. It is their seat of power more so than the Red Keep in King's Landing? Dragonstone is the Targaryen seat of power. Now Stannis had control of it, and obviously Melisandre was with him um, so when he left to go and get his army and go north and everything. He left Dragonstone unattended. Um, I think it's been unattended. Obviously, there's probably like a few hands and servants or whatever, but I think it's been unattended since then. Um, the whole Tyrell thing is just a courtesy. They didn't live long enough for it to matter anyway. So she's obviously gone back to the only place that she knows. And I think she's probably there before Daenerys. Yep. She might even, you know, she might meet Daenerys as Daenerys comes in and explain to her, look, we need to go north, but we'll see. Yeah, and honestly, I think you can kind of see what looks to be like there's a smaller person. I don't have the image available right now, and I'm sorry for that. But it looks like there's a smaller person walking up the stairs uh, mm-hmm. co- in comparison with everyone else. And if that's the case, well, that's obviously Tyrion. So it's, yeah. And, and, and that leads me to the next question. If Daenerys shows up, uh, well, she does get to Dragonstone. But if she shows up and Melisandre's there and Melisandre gets to talking with her and maybe Danny's brought a few red priestesses with her, which honestly I think she did, but they'll probably be recast, so it'll be a totally different person playing Kinvara. But, yeah. you know, Mel, people were saying that they don't think Mel is going to hop to Danny's side about being the uh, the new prince that was promised, or the princess that was promised. Honestly, I think she will. I think th- the way that it'll be easy for her is that Jon Snow turned her down 
you know, she thought it was Stannis. She jumped to John. John turned her away, even though she explained that the war is coming. Maybe she's going to switch to Daenerys' side and try to convince her that, you know, this is what you need to do about going up north. And obviously Tyrion's going to... Tyrion has had, uh, I think, one or two conversations with Jon Snow. Once was, like, in a stable, and then once when they were camping on the way. He went with Jon Snow to the wall. So they've bonded. So Tyrion is definitely... It's either going to be Tyrion or Melisandre, but one of them is going to bring up to Daenerys, look, you need to go meet with Jon Snow. You need to go... You know, ally yourself with him because he's one of Daenerys' biggest haters. Like, he, you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, Varys won't trust Melisandre, will he? Uh, he, he really... Probably <laughs> not because she's a red priest and, you know, he yeah. fucking hates magic. But yeah. honestly, desperate times call for desperate measures. So the, the, the disparity is that is that right did i say that right the yeah. disparity okay well yeah the disparity between them will make them get over uh you know one yeah it could their, be whatever little beef they might have or whatever and honestly i think melisandre is less creepy than kinvara because mel has never had that confrontation with varies and try to call him out for having his uh penis. that's true that was that was yeah that was i'm mean, gonna yeah i want to see more from her just to kind of know how much she knows and um have her explain a little more about um R'hllor. I can never say the Red God's name properly, but it should be interesting. <laughs> R'hllor. No, you you had it right, I think. Um, no, yeah. This is funny. Uh, just reading these last couple comments um, in the chat, someone has said, uh, you don't get rich because you're stupid. And then Amber <laughs> Littlefield, by the way, shout out to Amber. Thank you for joining us. I was wondering where you were. She was late to the party. But anyway, Amber says, no, you get rich from a small loan of a million dollars. See, my Trump impression sounds like Bernie Sanders. And I even just threw my hands up like Bernie Sanders. But nah, <laughs> that was fucking hilarious. I, I started my business with a small loan of a million dollars. <laughs> like, what? Oh, my God. How much fucking money do you need to have for a million dollars to be a small amount of money? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> back to Game of Thrones. Let's not try to get too political. I know you guys have a pretty insane situation going over on over there right now, don't you all? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to get into politics too much because politics, um, but, you know, Theresa May, Jeremy Corbyn, I am I mean, I'm not going to get into if I'm li <laughs> liberal or conservative or anything like that. But, yeah, it just it boggles my mind. That's all I'll say. <laughs> I'm honestly, yeah, and I'll say, I think my, my subscribers can tell. I'm bipartisan. Like, there are certain things that I agree with that liberals do, and there are certain things that I agree with that conservatives do. I'm honestly exactly. a mix of the both, and that's, like, the worst type of person to be when it comes to politics. Like, they say, just pick a side. Well, I do pick a side with certain situations. But honestly, if you get on YouTube... The, the funniest videos that you watch are the liberals or people who call themselves liberals beating up fucking, oh, you know, God, yeah. Trump supporters. And uh, are those so are the only so videos you find. You don't see Trump supporters Genuinely beating up. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway. Spirit liberal people at the moment. But we'll hell get, yeah. we won't you, get into that. Here's a good question <laughs> to relate it back to Game of Thrones. Do you think Cersei, okay, so we have Cersei and Jon Snow. Which one's Trump and which one's Hillary Clinton? <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, I think I'm gonna. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna take that, bait. <laughs> All right, so that's a question. I'm, I'm gonna leave American. Po I'm gonna leave American politics to the Americans. I don't have it. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Because I, I damn sure I'm not about to sit here and try to make something. You know, talk <laughs> anything about. Yeah. Because, but uh, no. For the chat, real quick. Who who is who in 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 Westerosi elections? Who represents who? I think it's obvious to say that Trump is Cersei, but honestly, there's some shit that Hillary did back in the 90s with Clinton that could say that maybe she's, you know. Uh, anyway, all right. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, we'll go back to... Uh, we'll go back to the slideshow. Um, do you think that there's... That's another thing I wanted to talk about. Do you think that there's any significance to at the beginning of the trailer you know cersei's listing all the directions they have enemies in do you think there's anything to that because when she said we have enemies to the west or to the south the map the camera was panning over duskendale you know what i mean yeah that, i noticed that that's odd do um, you think there's any significance to that the only thing is she pissed off everybody i guess with the <laughs> with the blowing up recept um i don't know if it's going to go into too much detail as to who these enemies are uh but it'll be interesting to see because she, she i mean she's really 
she's cornered her herself you know she has so few allies which is why she'll need to take uh euron's help exactly um, that's that's what i was thinking i'm like bitch we hmm. know you have enemies all around you why are you listing it but i think that the reason why she's listing it is maybe because she's they were trying to she's trying to hint that okay there's one we do i do think that the tarleys are going to be one of the last houses that remain loyal to her yeah that that would make sense just because of the nature of randall tarley and his um his kind of steadfastness to the crown i mean he was um incredibly loyal to uh the mad king until they lost the war i mean he's the only one who beat robert on the field of battle and it makes sense that he would just be loyal to who's in power um is, so yeah is, I, w I would be surprised is he bannerman to the tyrell though i don't think he is um i'm not sure actually all right so um, in the chat type type real quick is house tyrell uh or sorry yeah is is <laughs> Is House Tarly loyal to House Tar Tyrell, or are they loyal to the Crown? They're probably going to be loyal to the Crown just because he knows that the Crown is going against Jon Snow, and Jon Snow is who sent his son, who he thought would become a man, um, <laughs> who sent his, yeah. to, sent his son to become a basically professional bookworm, which is what his father hated. And, and I, that, that reminds me real quick. He is an asshole to Gilly, and she literally has done nothing to this motherfucker. He's like, I took you for a Molestown whore. I was like, whoa, he, dude. Whoa. He the worst, man. He comes, like, relative to the books, he actually comes across quite nice. <laughs> That's how bad his character is. He's just, he's a, like, he makes Tywin look like father of the year. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's how Cersei is, dude. Honestly, she's batshit insane and paranoid as fuck in the books, and they kind of mellowed her out a little bit in the show. Uh, you know? Israel Sanchez has confirmed he is a bannerman to the Tyrell, so it should be interesting to see where his uh, allegiances lie. Yeah, see, and that's the thing. Honestly, Tyrell, he's, he's bannerman to the Tyrell for sure, but he also is loyal to the crown, and according mm -hmm. to Cersei, I'm sure she's going to spin it that the Tyrells were uh, trying to go against the crown. So basically, of she's going to proclaim if you go against you know my only thing is my only thing is with a man like randall tarley okay is he the sort of person to put his stock in a female leader of westeros do you see what i mean is he that mm -hmm. forward thinking or is he the sort of person who that like i think would probably be like obviously i don't agree with this but someone who would probably be like oh i think a man should rule because he's got those old-fashioned values he seems like that sort of person you know so well, maybe that's why he'll go against the crown well, I think that there. I think that everyone. Can, it can be argued that everyone has that attitude that a man should do it. You know, honestly, yeah. even the women have. Some of the women have that attitude. I think what's going to be more determining, or, or what's going to be more his side. And honestly, I can't really sit here and say that he is super misogynistic because his wife talks to him any kind of fucking way she wants to. I've never seen a wife on the show talk to him quite like how she did she said no you're insane basically you know like at the dinner table and she storms off and he and then as soon as she leaves what does he say to his son your mother was a fine woman not like that stupid yeah. bitch i'll go slap her up you know what i mean so i think that <laughs> yeah. the argument can't be too made that you know he's super misogynistic but that was also his wife so that maybe yeah. oh someone wants me to do it all right fine you raped her you murdered her you killed her children <laughs> it's not quite like that. I think he says it differently. You raped her. Right, uh, you're mad at her. <laughs> you killed her children. <laughs> say it. Say it. I could win this fight right now, but I'm being too cocky. Say it. Say it. Like, God damn it. Just kill him, motherfucker. That's all you had to do. But no, you wanted your head that squashed. That's still, still bugging like me to this grape. day. Hell yeah, dude. It was so gross when the blood just comes pouring in his mouth and he's got three little teeth. Oh, it's so nasty. Oh, man. <laughs> One punch from... That's who, that's who, all right, so look, I don't know if you watch anime, but that's what Gregor's new nickname is going into this season, One Punch Man. I love One, One Punch, Punch Man. Man. He's like, I will break your fucking face with One Punch. It's like my favorite anime theme tune as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I actually just, uh, I, I follow Bill Burr, and Bill Burr did this podcast okay. about how he started watching it. I watched all types of anime, but I had never given One Punch Man that much of a chance because i feel like it's just a trope it's like you know i had seen clips of it and i'm like god that's looks like they're trying to do like a uh dragon ball z mixed with like a marvel comic and i'm like oh, i can't get down with that but i watched the first episode like a week ago and i was digging it i forgot to come back to it i like to watch mine uh certain anime i'll watch with the subtitles certain anime i'll do if the voice actors are really good like for attack on titan those voice actors are the shit and i honestly the japanese one is good too but i prefer to not have to read you know 
the whole time. And honestly, I get what you mean. it sounds crazy to I mean, be like, Kunigetsukai. Kunigetsukai. Uh, nani? Wurunda Senru But yeah, no, yeah. yeah, let's step back from that one. We might, yeah. Um, all right, so yeah. No, it's awesome. But I feel like that could be his name. Like, I mean, who else can say that in uh, in all of Westeros? Who else can say, mm-hmm. yo, look, I will destroy your face in one hit? And he's done that multiple times. Remember, he pushed the guy who showed, who hung Dong on camera. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Smashed his head against the wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Um, so, yeah, going back to, you know, the original original thing before we went off on this tangent. Do you mm-hmm. think, um, remind us real quick, do you think that the, the directions on the map that they showed us when Cersei was listening – listing her enemies do you think that that has anything to do with the show like maybe she's got some enemies in duskendale or something that we i think it was more for the more for the benefit of the trailer i don't know that they, that's going to be too literal when it comes down to it because it's just too too many too many enemies to to really exactly. focus on you know? exactly like yeah like bitch we know you have enemies everywhere why are you listening to them? i think it does just exactly. add to the trailer as like a refresher for us that's it um but I guess, I mean, you could, I guess there is, and I'm glad you said that, because I was about to say I could, uh, like, you know, get carried away and think that every single thing in the trailer is, like, a sign for something else, you know what I mean? That's how the books gets us, though. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> this there means you go. That, that means this, and this person oh, secretly that yeah. person. I've been pouring over those books like crazy. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Hell yeah. So, uh, what do you think, this is also relates to the table, what do you think that that meant? When Tyrion knocks over that Lannister lion, do you think that that's because they're taking Casterly Rock? See, here's a lot of people think that it's that they've taken Casterly Rock, uh, like past tense, and so he knocks it over to to show that. But that seems a bit silly to me. I because I don't know that they do it and then go all the way back or <laughs> or tell Tyrion and be like, oh, it's done now, so he can knock over the thing. I think it's just Tyrion's given a Tyrion esque speech. And at the end of that speech, to punctuate it, he knocks the lion over. And I think that that's what that moment was. Hell yeah. I th- I mean, I agree with what you said, but I also think that was because he just, like, I think that these are from, you know, all throughout the season. And I think that that could be from episode three after they just took Casterly Rock. But, it could you know, be. that's it could just be. my opinion. I, I mean, I kind of hope so, because, I mean, it does look like they will take Casterly Rock. I don't know what's going to stop a horde of Unsullied. Hell so yeah. we will see. <laughs> except for except for naked females. Oh! <laughs> I mean, it is crazy, though, isn't it, when you think about it? Unsullied and Dothraki. Like, the Westeros isn't ready. This is before we get to the dragons. And I'm oh. somebody who thinks that it won't be that easy for Danny, but still, it's hard to look at and objectively and see well, what they're Well, yeah, do. when you look at the numbers, but when you look at combat style, the Westerosi, Knight, Westerosi Knights are not used to fighting Dothraki, but the Dothraki are not used to fighting them. And also... The, the Dothraki, Westeros- also, they're not as... Um, disciplined are they nope but they did some awesome shit with the horses like the jumping on the horses mm. that looks like that's going to be probably greater than battle of the bastards because that looked insane oh, i want to <laughs> yeah. see that oh um, that looks crazy hell yeah uh but yeah i don't know i think i i think and another interesting challenge is is most of our westerosi knights are in full cha- you know like full suits of armor none of them are armored if anything they wear mm. the light armor almost like they're the uh, archer like when you're ma- when you're playing an RPG game, they're the rogues. They're wearing like rogue and stealth armor, which is stupid because stealth armor will not a fucking you know leather thick leather armor is not going to stop an arrow. You know what I mean? Like just this is, this is not going to happen. So they are do kind of have the disadvantage it that way. You know? That's true. I mean, I do think they will be a bit when they when we see them come unstuck going against full armored knights with incredibly disciplined regiments. You know? I mean, I don't care if you're like a kick ass warrior. At the end of the day, you can't do anything against numbers and um organization you know so yeah. it should be interesting to see that we got king's john snow in the chat which is cool <laughs> hell yeah shout out to john snow winter is coming but yeah i i think honestly i don't know i think we are in for a treat when it comes to these battle scenes i think that you know wars have been won against like lesser odds than what cersei is facing and what is game of thrones if not you know love to lead you into thinking one way one way but then switch it at the last second like leading us to think that because daenerys has all of these fucking troops all Mm -hmm. of these dothraki all of these unsullied 
three dragons that it's just going to be a walk in the park when really Cersei's probably got a ballista with wildfire arrows attached to it ready to take out six or seven dragons you know what i mean yeah this is i mean it, it does feel an awful lot like a red herring like we're all led to believe that uh, daenerys is going to sweep this because all the trailers shown is her doing that we haven't seen anything we haven't seen cersei do her thing yet you know and you're on you're on such a wild card you know so it, wild oh, card man. bitches <laughs> well, yeah exactly <laughs> Oh, I'll watch that later. But, um, yeah, you're already such a wild card that it's like it, it, anything can happen. And I can't stress that enough. I don't want everybody to think that Daenerys is going to walk this because I don't think that she will. Hell yeah. She's, she's, I mean, she's probably going to do fairly well, though, because honestly, oh, yeah. we haven't seen her other than in the earlier seasons where she was conquering Marine and she freed the other cities, the other slave cities. She hasn't really been in a battle since then. We haven't. We saw the Dothraki quickly take out the Harpy. Um, yeah. You know, the, the Harpies when they rode back to Marine, but we haven't seen them in a battle. And I would love to see them whooping ass on fully armored <laughs> Westerosi knights. But also, not, you know, also having the. Just because it would make for an interesting story to also have the Lannisters putting up a fight too. Because, like I said, the Dothraki uh, are overwhelming and. Westerosi knights have never fought them, but they have also never fit, fought Westerosi knights either. So, kind of this is true that way. Um, this is true. The next thing I kind of wanted to talk about was Arya Stark. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about what she's doing, like whether she's camped out, headed to Winterfell, or whether she is still trying to seek, you know revenge honestly and we uh, all know that she's not going to give that up right away you know she's not no she's not is she um i think she's probably heading home um i don't i just don't know what else that she would be doing that far north i mean because who's who's on the remainder of her list i mean you've got like cersei and well uh, the mountain and stuff but they're sandor, all south sandor and <laughs> sandor definitely sandor but do you think that she'll have it in her to to no, kill him no Definitely nah, not. not. Honestly, though, what might make her do that is if Sandor does something that pisses her off, like back the try to stop her from killing the Red Woman, which we now right. know everyone thought that Melisandre was going to meet up with the Brother Without Banners. But I think this kind of concerns. Or wait a second, more tenfold drop. What if Melisandre tries to go back with the Brother Without Banners and Jon turns her down again, and then that's when she goes to Dragonstone? That's probably not going to happen that way. Maybe you never know. Honestly, you never know, but. I, I do think it's um, telling that we didn't see the Brotherhood at all in this trailer. Yeah, because... that, sorry, I, I, I hate to cut you off, but that reminds That's me. It, it, anyone that we didn't see in this trailer is because they're in shorter scenes. So we didn't see Gendry, we didn't see Sandor, we didn't see the Brotherhood, um, and there exactly. are a few others. We didn't see Sam or Gilly. And the reason being is because I think that that's the scenes, the few scenes that they're in, not that they're, you know, not good actors, but they're not the, the main cast, they're supporting cast, so the few scenes they're in are going to be detrimental and crucial, and any kind of showing of that could be spoiler and giveaway. So anybody it's, that you miss from the trailer... It's all about the location. Anywhere you see, if you see where they are, it gives a lot away. Exactly. Know? Like So if they were to show those, you know, it would be too spoilers. So we just have to look at that as we'll probably get to see them in the next trailer, because they're, they're, what, what will likely happen is we'll get another trailer, a teaser trailer, and then the month that the show airs, like in July, the actors like Davos last year released the first actual clip from an episode um, when he went on Conan. So I'm expecting us to get real clips from the first episode come July. So I think that we're, there's still a chance to see those other characters, but we have to take it as as like um, even more excitement building up because those characters that we didn't see are in such insane scenes that they couldn't afford to show us that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I agree. And the thing with Arya, the reason why I wanted to talk to you about it was because it just kind of sketches me out. It's like she's already up north because we can see the snow in the background. And if she was up north, how much further north does she have to go where it's snowing where she wouldn't just ride the rest of the way to Winterfell? You know what I mean? Like, why is she camping out in the snowy woods? Well, maybe she's heading to the wall, because that was her initial plan, wasn't it? Before oh, yeah, because she thought John... Shit. Well, I think... I don't know. I think she will probably hear that he's held up at Winterfell, unless she finds out that John left, and it's only Sansa there. So she's like, fuck Sansa, I don't want to go see her. Well, that's it. I mean, she, maybe, maybe she just... I mean, she'll probably hear you're right, but maybe she doesn't. Maybe she's spending so much time on the road, but she doesn't... Because she's not the sort of person that's going to go into a tavern 
you know, and then just sit around me. She needs to eat and stuff. I'm guessing she can hunt and stuff now. But do you think we'll also see Nymeria this season? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. I, um, I think I think that, you know, we're going to also get the super pack of dire wolves as well. Oh, yeah. By the way, did you hear Jon Snow's wolf died the other day? I know. That's sad, man. That, that that's so sad, fucked man. up. That's so fucked yeah. up. If that's foreshadowing and Ghost dies this season, I might oh I might have to write uh, an angrily worded letter <laughs> to Dan and Dave for also <laughs> killing him off on the show. You know what I mean? But, but let me think. The eye thing. Do you think there's a chance that maybe she could be having wolf dreams and off to find Nymeria? Do you see what <sighs> I mean? Which is why we're seeing her in the wilderness so much. I would love... You know, she has wolf dreams up until she goes to the House of Black and White, and then she starts having them again once she gets back to Westeros. I would love for them to just have maybe had fucked that whole storyline up, and then we just start seeing her getting them now, and it's because yeah. Nymeria is close to her. You know, That would be so cool, you know, if she could return with a wolf. Ugh. Oh, yes. she, definitely, she definitely will. <laughs> she definitely will run into her. The question is, how does she find her? Yeah, Maybe she hears I reports. I think we'll probably see that early on. Like, the first scene we see with Arya, she'll be doing her thing headed from River Run, and then she hears reports at that clip, you know, that picture that we got of her where she's, like, sitting in a tavern or some shit um, where I thought she could maybe be at home in Winterfell. Um, but maybe she hears reports of a giant dire wolf killing shit or, like, people being scared of something near that area, and she goes to that area, looks for it, and Nymeria comes running up to her. The annoying thing is that they didn't put any uh, foreshadowing in or anything in, like, last season. Yeah. Because it would have been good to see something... Because, like, if you're a casual show watcher, like for my like my mum, for example, she watches the show. I like I'll go home every now and again and I'll take her the uh, DVDs or something. And uh, she's somebody who would have completely forgotten about Arya's Wolf or something like that, you know, uh, because it was like season one was the last time we saw her in the show. So it would have been good to have a bit of foreshadowing beforehand, I think. But I do think I, st- I still think that we'll see her again this season. Yeah, I, I it would be foolish if they didn't. And honestly. <laughs> You know, with, with as many characters that are probably going to drop like flies this season, they need to give us some fan service and add something like Nymeria's super pack of regular wolves. <laughs> or her yeah, gray wolf cousins, as she calls them. <laughs> that could be one of the spinoffs. Hell yeah. Arya and the wolves. Or like, uh, the show's like about just a couple of cool dogs hanging out on the town, you know. <laughs> Going shopping and hunting deer yeah, John's, and shit. John's little bag. <laughs> Um. All right. So, just to summarize, I think that in this picture, Arya has is making her way home, but she's she's doing something else. She's camping out somewhere, looking for something else. I don't think she's directly headed home to Winterfell because if she's in a cold environment where it's snowing on the ground, and last season it was not snowing in in River Run, I think it mm-hmm. would be. I mean, I guess we could start off the season with it snowing everywhere, and if that's the case, then it would be snowing in River Run. But I think she's. I think she's waiting for Nymeria, and she's finding out because someone had told her a rumor that there were reports of a dire wolf killing or killing like a farmer's sheep or some shit or just lurking around in a certain section of the woods, maybe right where she released her at. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. Because I mean, we know that it, was closer. It, that was closer it to Winterfell. Makes sense. It makes sense because she's constantly in the wilderness in like all the stuff we've seen so far. I mean, I think there was a promo shot of her in like a, a holdfast or something, but for the main part, she seems to be out in the wild so yeah it'll be cool to see hell yeah do you think uh do you think she's so do you think you think she is gonna run into nymeria this season right i hope i can't tell if that's the fanboy in me and the wish fulfillment i i try to separate the two as often as possible (laughs) because i I just kind of want to i don't want to get my hopes up this is such a different show to anything i've ever seen but um i hope that she does yeah my only concern is like i said the lack of foreshadowing and uh yeah the setup isn't really there that's it that's my only concern unless they start setting it up early in the season and then she doesn't see the wolf until later on maybe you see what i'm saying it would so, play like, off nicely yeah yeah then they could do it that way maybe 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 it opens with her first scene and she's listening overhearing someone talking about you know the rumors or some shit that's right they could do that thing that they do when they give something away that's going to happen so they'll be like last time on game of thrones <laughs> and they'll show one random clip from the first season yep, about that's about that that's, <laughs> that's actually that's what they're going to do when Tyrion rides a dragon and I know that that sounds crazy right but just check my check the description there's a link to that video it is spoiler okay. free but everyone watching and Dom, you know, 
go check that out because that's literally what in the comment section someone had said that uh or no actually i said it in the video it's like you know if they're gonna play a clip of uh Tyrion meeting with the dragons like showing us again okay Tyrion has a pre-existing relationship with these dragons he is in yeah. fact going to do this right here okay oh, interesting i'll go and see that um all right there we go yeah this is him he's walking up to the edge when i first saw the trailer you know i was overhyped and my blood sugar was like through the fucking roof i'm like is he walking up to the edge is he gonna go is he getting on the back of one of the dragons oh my <laughs> god i was like why would he do that why wouldn't he just get on it he's like i'm gonna jump on it while it's flying like we're on some avatar type shit but then i realized that no he was watching daenerys take off from dragonstone daenerys was to probably me, leaving him at dragonstone <laughs> to me it looks like he was going to meet luke skywalker <laughs> just because <laughs> oh yeah octu octu dude planet that's octu bro <laughs> <laughs> but um no it does it's a cool shot it's a super cool shot man i like that i like that he's 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 going to go hand luke his fucking lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the only way this show could get cooler <laughs> um and then one thing another thing that i wanted to talk about was this image of theon I initially was like, okay, he's obviously somewhere where we haven't seen him at before. You know, um, it looks like there's, you know, fire in the background. I think what this might be is, it looks like he might be on a ship. I don't know, that background yeah, is so is. blurred, but definitely. I kind of can he's see on a bricks. Boat. I'm on a boat. He's definitely on a boat because I 100% I, I think that. There's another shot in the trailer with um, the ship being attacked. And there's all these burning embers and it's on fire and if you look at that shot i mean you look at the theon shot the colors and everything are the exact same uh theon's on that ship whether what i don't know what happens to him or what happens to that ship if it's euron attacking or whatever but i i i firmly believe that theon is on a boat in that in that picture now see me with my crazy tinfoil self i thought that that was gendry f forming fucking armor for john or a sword, and he walks up to him like, what are you doing here? Like, in the forge or some shit. Because I'm like, oh, those are sparks from Gendry forming that armor. <laughs> no, but Theon wouldn't have ever met Gendry, would he? Nope. But And that's why he's got that look on his face. Like, who the oh, fuck Oh, okay, you? like, who are you? <laughs> okay, yeah, no, I get that. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I do think it's the ship, unfortunately. Again, again, it's just, it, it seems to correspond and seems to make sense. So, um, Theon will probably die at sea. He'll probably die in this, ep in this season, I think. You think so? Yeah, I don't think there's much left. There's he's had a great arc. He's had a really, really good arc, better than a lot of other characters. You know, a bit, he's had a better character arc than Jon Snow has. And stay with me for this one because obviously we all love Jon Snow, but Jon Snow has kind of just been unwaveringly good <laughs> the whole time. Uh, whereas Theon's had all these struggles, and obviously he was castrated and he was a lackey and then he regained his courage and you know i mean he's had a really really good character arc and i think he's come to the end of that now and i think we'll get to see him go out in a blaze of glory but we'll see i think uh i don't know i think ah uh, that just i just got sidetracked because i i was thinking this i was reading the comments and then i thought of something about my I would honestly, you know, initially for you for you saying that, I would just be dis disappointed because they they could have they could have had him come back and honestly that's where I disagree with you like straight up I disagree with you we're we're drawing a line okay. in the sand right here buddy okay, no, cool. I'm just kidding. I think he's going to to f have a full character arc and I think he's going to come back and become the king of the Iron Islands. Uh, no, the Game of Thrones doesn't work like that. <laughs> Game like, of Thrones no. doesn't work <laughs> like that. <laughs> if this was Lord of the Rings or something, then yeah. <laughs> but, I know, but I think that that's why, because he suffered so much. Like, you know, people have said to him, uh, or, or, or Sansa was saying, you've paid for that. And he's like, no, paying for that would be dead. And I think that's why, like, maybe it, you and a lot of other people think that that's why he's going to die. But I think the opposite of that. I think that because he suffered so much, he deserves that ultimate arc. Like, okay. I get that, but he, he said himself that he's not a ruler. And he knows that Yara is the best. Now, here's the thing. Yara is the better ruler, I guess. I mean, he, he believes so. And I think it would kind of undo that faith he's shown if he becomes king anyway. And I think we're seeing, like, the women are taking over in Westeros. Um, now, is Yara going to survive this season? That's a whole other thing, because as we saw in the trailer, there was that scene with her kissing... Um, What's the lady's name? Elaria Sand. Mm -hmm. 
And what happened to the last girl that Alaria kissed? <laughs> that was um, Marcella, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, so maybe. Whoa, Yara dude, no, 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 no! Don't don't glaze over that. Don't glaze over that. That was a really <laughs> good. That was a really good one. Give us give us some more on that. You think? So yeah. So I don't know. I just I just as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh god, what's she doing? Because it all happened so fast. I watched it a few times, and I was like, oh, she's kissing Yara. And then I thought back, oh god, yeah, she kissed Marcella. When she, as she poisoned her before she took those things off of her lip, like like poison ivy from that Batman film. But why would she betray? <laughs> why would she betray the sense? I mean, uh, oh, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. But it seems odd that they'd show that, right? Hell yeah. Um. Okay. So before before uh, we go any further, I just want to add this real quick that uh, for for YouTube, the way that the the their pay cycle works that once this month ends, that's it. So all of what I make in this month is going to go towards the Con of Thrones. So if you guys want to, I got that super chat up. Y'all could hook that up. Or, you know, just sharing this video actually helps too. But yeah, uh, I just figured I had to say that. So that's why it's monetized right now. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. I think that, I think Theon, honestly, I know I'm fanboying a little bit, but I think he deserves to have some kind of comeback to... to I- I agree. He does, which is why I don't think he will. <laughs> you think he'll die? That's his. That's his. I think he will die. I think he'll have a. I think he'll have quite a wretched death as well. I don't think it's going to be noble at all. I think he's going to go out like a punk. If I'm being honest with you, and I, and I think that's really bad. And I do feel bad saying that because, like I said, I, I've enjoyed Theon's character arc because he was never evil. He was just an idiot. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, I love the way he, you put that. That was so. That was that was gold, dude. That was fucking. You know, gold. he wasn't. He wasn't a Ramsey or a Joffrey or anything. He was just a, a he, somebody who was like kind of at a loss because he had the ties to his homeland. He was raised as a, kind of a servant, I guess, to the Starks. You know, as a hostage, uh, and he didn't really know where he stood. And I, I, that inner conflict, you know, I think is something that we can all relate to. So he's quite a realistically uh, a realistic character, but. At the end of the day, yeah, I just don't see him getting a happy ending, which is um, a shame because he has been through a crazy amount. Um, but yeah, your runs a bastard. <laughs> I just don't see. I don't see Theo getting the better of him. Hell yeah, I think. I think the perfect ending. If Theon has to die, I think the perfect ending would be sacrificing himself for for something else, like to maybe save Sansa or something. And honestly, spoiler alert. You know, we do have. Spoil, I'll say it one more time. Spoiler. We do have, you know, some images of Theon meeting with someone who's not too happy to see him. And I think you know who I'm mm-hmm. talking about. And that's mm-hmm. going to be probably one of the greatest scenes of the show. It's going to be definitely. Awesome. It's definitely. <laughs> it's going to feel good. <laughs> but we'll see. I mean, I don't know. Like I said, he could go on. He could slip through the cracks um, and survive all the way to next season. I mean, to be honest, I'm surprised he survived as long as he had. I thought it was definitely it for him last season. So I could be wrong again. I thought last season was the season he would die defending Sansa. Um, and he didn't. So, you know, could be wrong again. It would be interesting to see. Hell yeah. Um. So next next up, we haven't really talked about them too much, is uh, Sansa and Baelish. Now, I said it and I'll say it again. Uh, little finger is up to some little finger shit. <laughs> and... <laughs> little finger is is more little finger than ever in this trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! Um, honestly, I want to see him die. I'm not a fan of him at all. Yes, he's a good player of the game, but he is like on the bottom of my, you know, acceptable. Like everyone has a level of bullshit that I can put up with it, with in the show mm-hmm. before I, you know don't really like them as a character anymore and Littlefinger met his limit when he put that knife to Ned Stark's fucking throat man that's when and that was like the first season so yeah yeah okay um it's a Littlefinger impression as well go on oh who's did someone all right uh this is this is this is Peter what he's saying to Sansa right now hey Sansa want to sneak into the dark corner with me and go let me see if your carpets match your drapes Sansa (laughs) <laughs> that's John, really good Jon Snow is your half brother I can be your full penis I don't even know what the f- I was about to say but I can be all the way in you instead of oh, halfway okay. but I didn't yeah that was a little bit too that was a that was a really good <laughs> that was a good impression um, yeah no I agree Littlefinger's the worst uh, he's one of those characters with no redeeming features but he will not I mean I think he'll die this season but I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't the one 
And honestly, I think he won't die just because there are so many of us who hate him. But the one yeah. thing that would help him go back up in my book personally is if he somehow is the one to tell John the full story and we get a flashback from him telling the story or something. Yeah, that would that would be cool to see. Um, if only to... Here's the thing. It's a weapon. If little, if little finger, if little finger, <laughs> his penis little... is a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> it, the, the that information is a weapon because that information single handedly puts John's claim ahead of Daenerys's, which is something he'd want to do if only to piss off Varys. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So that could be interesting to see. But um, will little finger die this season? I mean, <sighs> I want him to. I'll, I'll say yes, but probably not. I mean, he's just so good at being creepy and conniving and deceiving. And he's kind of got the veil at his back, so we'll see. Yeah, I think I think the conversation between him and John, like when he's sneaking up behind John, he's going to be like, you think your mother was a southern whore, bastard? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to be like, your mother was secretly Leanna Stark. No southern whore there, just a northern whore. <laughs> and then John like grabs him by the fucking throat, and he's like, oh, <laughs> Here's the thing: if he's done that, if John, if he's riled up John, he's done it on purpose. Little Finger doesn't do things by accident or just accidentally piss people off. So he's trying to get a reaction out of John. So it's going to be interesting to see why. Hell yeah! Everything is intentional. Nothing is, you know, left up to uh, yeah the gods per se. Exactly. Yes, yeah, that's actions. a good. That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> so honestly, you know, I think we should uh, list. I'll list two things that I like that Littlefinger has done. One, when he when we first kind of meet him, when he's talking to Sansa, um, when she's watching uh, Loras in the jousting tournament between him and the mountain, and that Don't story do. that he tells them, that, yeah, I like I that, that moment. And then also, it's not like I like the scene or that I think he's doing the right thing, but I think it was fucking funny as hell in season six when uh, Jan Royce comes up to him and he's like, Last we heard of you, Littlefinger, you were sending Sansa, or you let Sansa go get married by such and such. And he was like, he switched it around so quick. I'm like, now you see, that is fucking savage. And then also yeah. when Cersei said, no, power is power. And then she was like, cut his throat. Oh, no way, I'm that kidding. Was, <laughs> that's, <laughs> so good. What? that's why I love Cersei. I mean, I don't know, everybody knows it. Like, if you watch my channel, I, I love Cersei. Like, she's like, one of my favorite characters in all of fantasy, because she's just such a bitch <laughs> like she knows it and she owns it and you know it's it's, it's cool to see and i love lena Headey as well so that goes a long way but um yeah cersei's awesome and anyone that pisses off little finger is all right in my book hell yeah like i don't know i would love to see little finger try to make another alliance with cersei and that's how he meets his end like he goes back and that's him like uh where the mountain was looking you know Mount was looking at someone, and we could see someone in the foreground. That's Littlefinger coming back and trying to be like, "Look, I was on your side the whole time, Cersei. I was working for the crown. Like, <laughs> like, no, you weren't, bitch. You about to get your neck broke. Like, just." <clears throat> and it would make sense too because he's always trying to take it to the next level of cockiness and boldness. Like how he switches it around on Jan Royce. Like, nigga, nah. Oh. <laughs> like, you about to get it, bro. Like, what? Oh my lord! No, I mean, Littlefinger is what he is. I mean, he's got a lot of fans out there, surprisingly. But we'll see what happens. With Hell him. yeah, they're they're more fans of like how he plays the game because you can't really be a fan of his character. I mean, I guess you could. I guess you could. What are what are two things that he's done that you that you've liked? If you can't even yeah. list two things, <laughs> I okay. I'm, I'm I don't know like the quotes or anything for verbatim. The first thing is the defining moment of his character when he loses. Obviously, we don't see it in the show, but he becomes the way he is because he wants to win Catelyn Stark's heart. And so he goes to fight uh, Brandon Stark and loses and then realizes that he can't, uh, he can't play the game the way they play it, you know? So he has to play it the way he plays it. So I like that about his character because that's a really interesting way to look at things. Um, and I also really like the conversation that he has with Varys in season one when they're both stood in front of the Iron Throne. And I think that that's a conversation that a lot of people should go back to before watching season seven, as I think there's a lot of um, uh, foreshadowing. Hell in yeah, that chaos is a ladder. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I think that's like one of the best lines in the show. 
I enjoy. I did it. I'll admit it. I enjoyed that scene too. I'm like, what is what is this dude talking about? Because like when I was yeah. a teenager, I was like, anarchy, yeah, anarchy. And I'm like, he's a fucking anarchist. I like this dude. And then when I yeah. saw him, when my honestly another favorite scene with him is when he when he gets Ned to come to the brothel and Ned was like, oh, you think you're funny? And he grabs. He's like yeah. about to shit his pants. He's like, no, yeah. no, she's inside. And then Catelyn comes out at the very last second, right before he dies, and she's like. Ned and he turns around and he's like oh and then he still doesn't let him go right away he still has a grip on him for a little bit you know what I mean that shit is hilarious yeah it is it's good like, to see him shit his pants it's like the northerners the Starks they get like in their head like Hulk smash and you have to back him away from that and we saw that with John and uh, Ramsey last season if, if Sansa hadn't showed up John would have literally beat that motherfucker to death I love that sound that we get from the Mormont shield hitting his throat. You could just hear it crushed, dude. It was like, yeah. it was like, oh, wait, can you hear that? Water yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> speaking of Mormonts, huh? we're going to get more Liana Mormont this season. Oh, yeah, definitely. And yeah. I think that's why she was left out of the trailer because she's yeah. she's going to be in some crucial fucking scenes. I'm most looking forward to her meeting Arya. Oh, that would be dope. I want to see her do some like Legolas type shit. Like surf on a dragon's neck and then like dive off and, <laughs> and like double stab two people or something. <laughs> you just gave me this funny ass image of Sandor launching Arya fully armored into a an, into a crowd of whites, like like uh you know like the Hulk and uh, Captain America. Oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, or what is it? Ant Man? Who does it? What is it? It's in it's in. Uh, you've got the comics. Civil you've got like War. Colossus and Wolverine do it. Yeah, and it's called the special and then you've got the ant-man and the hawkeye one <laughs> yeah on the top of the arrow hell yeah yeah um all right so next up is let's talk about uh and you got we're gonna start taking questions here soon because we're gonna be wrapping this up in a bit so you guys can start yeah, loading get going soon because it's actually nearly 12 on my neck of the woods. Oh, I have work in the morning. <laughs> Hell yeah, I feel you on that one. Oh, um, man. All right, so the last, I think, I think we pretty much covered for the most part, most of it. Um, I think this was the, uh, yeah, I, w I did want to talk about this. I think that a lot of people were saying this was a ship battle or a sea battle because the, the you could see the water rushing in from everywhere. Honestly, I think it's, I think... It could be that, you know, it kind of reminded me of The Hobbit when they're underground in the goblin tunnels in The Hobbit and the water is, like, taking over the bridges and it's, like, filling up or whatever and they're, like, running away to escape. That's honestly yeah. what I think this is. Like, Jon Snow could have been somewhere, maybe north of the wall, and he's in a cave and he starts getting attacked by the White Walkers and they cause an avalanche and then the water starts filling up. But it could be at Pike. They could be at the Greyjoy's homeland and they could be fighting... You know, to I think what what Sir, what Daenerys may do is once she goes to Westeros, she's gonna send out her allies to go basically back to where they're from. Like I think she's gonna send Olena back to High Garden. I think she's gonna send the Sand Snakes back to Dorne, but also have them ready to go. Like they're gonna take some Unsullied and Dothraki with her, so that way when she attacks, she's attacking from all sides. And that's also why Cersei said our enemies have surrounded us. But I think that this could be, and like I want your opinion on this too. What do you think this is? Even this is a battle at Pike. And that's like the bridge that Balon got pushed off of. Yeah, um, I agree with you. This is actually the most interesting shot in the trailer for me because I couldn't quite work out what was going on. And um, like you, this actually reminded me a lot of uh, the Mines of Moria. You know, you know when they're descending down the steps and they're trying to get away. And I was really like, this is very Lord of Lord of the Rings esque. <laughs> like, I can't quite work out where they're going or what's going on here. So yeah, it could be Pike. That's a good. That's a good one. But I kind of really want to see what it is because it does look like an interior sort of. But yeah, when it's I was hard to, hard to make out. Hell yeah! When I was trying to screen cap this, and by the way, all these thumbnails were provided courtesy of Dom himself. But when I was trying to screen cap this for my video, the scene is so fucking quick, and I think that's because if they had let it play any longer, we'd be able to determine exactly where it is. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Which is interesting though, because we've never seen John, in, and it is John, right? From what I could, yeah, what, what I could yeah. make out. We've never seen him in a location like this, you know? So I, I, I really want to know what's going on here because I was watching it and they're rushing down. You can tell it's a descent. <clears throat> Excuse me. So and what do you guys in the chat think? Because like, this is one of the things that I really, really don't 
know what to think about it really it's just it is what it is on the face value and i can't really offer any insight so i'm very interested about it hell yeah yeah so yeah real quick you guys type in the chat what is going down in this scene are they at pike and you know certain part of daenerys's plan is to send yara and theon back to back to the iron islands to get one of them to retake the castle and hold that as a stronghold for daenerys or do you mm. think that you know, this is somewhere completely different in Jon Snow. You know, what I initially had thought, because my mind races insane, I thought that that scene of Littlefinger creeping from behind the shadows is that Jon was actually in the crypts of Winterfell. This is in the crypts of Winterfell, and, and yes. Littlefinger has somehow flooded the tunnel, trying to kill Jon or destroy evidence yeah. or some shit. Or maybe revealed a, a passage so that goes deeper because we know that they're supposed to be a lot bigger than they are, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, who knows? And they've got hot springs underneath them, right? Mm-hmm. That's where, yeah, that's where I was like, because that's how the walls, of, they don't mention it on the show, but that's how, you know, that's how the walls of Winterfell, that's how Winterfell's heated through the natural hot springs that are underneath. So that, that could, I mean, it could be that. It, it is likely a battle, but why the fuck would Jon Snow be carrying a torch in a battle? He would only yeah. likely have his sword in his hand. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't, he looks like he's running from the water filling up. And it looks like they're discovering something because he's got a torch, and you usually need that if you want to notice, you know, he's looking for something. And honestly, exactly. there could be a number of many different reasons why he would go down there, but I think one of the reasons what could lead him down there is because Bran uh, shares with him that, you know, there's like iron swords that could potentially be Valyrian steel that are buried with the Kings of Winter, and that's what keeps their spirits at rest. Or, you know, he could be trying to go get... Rhaegar's armor because Rhaegar's buried down there in the crypts of Winterfell. Oh, there you go. I mean, it, it, it could be anything. I really don't know one way or the other. I like the crypts theory. Um, sorry that the picture isn't super clear, guys, but it really is a flash in my trailer. So maybe no, go back yeah, and no, watch it in dude, motion. That was clearer than the image I got. You should have mine looked like a fucking like a little speck of flame over blackness. Like it was nothing. You couldn't tell what the hell. Yeah, was. it's really difficult to, to make out. But um yeah, Crypts of Winterfell is a, is a cool theory because um, obviously in the books as well, I wish I had um, the, the text to hand because there is a lot of quotes. John starts having dreams about the crypts mm -hmm. and um, relating to his past and his future and stuff. And they're really vivid uh, dreams that could come into play in the show. So we, we think in the books, at least, he's definitely going there to find something out and to explore something. So if that's this scene, I'm, oh man, I'm stoked. I can't wait. And I like this one from Jedi Master Cheryl. She said they could be the mines underneath Casterly Rock. That's sick as fuck. That's a good idea. I don't know if John that's, would go with the Unsullied well. to take Casterly Rock. But, yeah, but you never know. You never yeah, know. Exactly. And we know no one would be down there because Tywin said that the last mine from Casterly Rock ran dry eight years prior. So we know yeah. that those are empty. Oh, I miss Tywin. I know it sounds weird to say. <laughs> you you <laughs> weirdo. Again, like, I got, my favorite characters are usually the bad guys because they're kind of in, a lot more interesting than the good guys. But um, yeah, Tywin no, was just... For dope. sure, dude. Like DC's <laughs> villains beat the shit out of Marvel's villains. They are so oh, yeah, much backstory day. with them. All day. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, characters that do that think they're doing good but aren't are always the most interesting. So anyway, yeah, a bit of a tangent. Yeah, I think, I don't know. I think it will be interesting to say, uh, the very least, this season is going to be nuts. I like um, this. Rob Plant in the chat says it looks like Brienne. Apparently another YouTuber got a better clip and it looks like Brienne. So who knows? In this picture right here? In the picture with John. I'll have to look at it again when they're actually in motion, but apparently she could be with him there. Wait a second. So... They're saying that that's Brienne with the torch, right? I'm not too sure. What are you guys saying? Are you saying that it's John with the the, the torch? Because there's no and fucking Brienne, way. That's, Brienne, yeah, that's definitely John. You can tell by his ponytail, oh, yeah. the black hair. Yeah, like that's for sure John. There's no way that's Brienne, unless they're saying Brienne is in this. Is in the is in the actual is in the thing. I'm just quickly running the trailer again as I'm doing this to have a see if I can find that clip. Yeah, I was about to say because the only thing that I can see right there okay. is uh. Is Littlefinger. So we see like John. Looks yeah, like no. Um, okay, so it's like, oh, I don't know. And Sansa is stupid if she sends Brienne away from her, her because okay. Brienne needs to stay. It's not. It's not. It's not Winterfell. <laughs> okay, so if we go, if 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 anybody after this live stream, go and have a look. No, at the I'll trailer. just I'll just share the I'll do a screen cap of the trailer right now. Yeah. 
Yeah, so basically, if you if you just scroll along a little bit further from that point, it's about one minute sixteen into the trailer, um, and they rush down to a host of people with like what looks like shields. Well, there's somebody there with a shield and a weapon, so maybe this is at Castle Black or something. Hmm. I'll have to rewatch that. For some reason, it's not letting me screen screen cap that. Hmm. Um. But yeah, that's nuts. I don't know. Okay. I'll have to check yeah. it out. Interesting, anyway. Okay, uh, yeah, that's cool. So was there was there anything that you wanted to uh, mention? Oh, and sorry, just quickly. Uh, Shells of House Dane says, and you can see the Kraken on the shields on the right. So it could be a ship battle. But um, anything else I wanted to mention? Yeah, I just wanted to ask you, actually. What... So far, do you think, if you had to name one, I know it's quite a difficult question, it has been your favourite Game of Thrones moment? My favourite moment? Yeah, in all of Game of Thrones so far. Ah, oh, God, that's going to take me like fucking five <laughs> yeah. minutes. I'm, I, the first thing that pops in my head, like the very first thing that popped in my head, was probably hmm. Amelia Clark's nude scenes from all of the <laughs> And that's just that's just you know I'm not trying to sound pervy, but that's honestly, no, no, that's honestly the thing that got me interested in the show was that you know the ratio of boobs per scene were like something like every three thirty seconds there was a different pair of boobs the first season, and that's what pulled me to the show. But now you know that I've gone into the expanded material and the extended universe, if you will, uh, even though mm-hmm. the show is technically the EU, the original universe would be you know the books. Yeah. Honestly, uh, I'll say. Ah, I can. Can I do top three? Yeah, go for it. Um. Okay. So top three. Number one is definitely gonna have to be the uh. Fuck. It's look. I can't even choose that. Daenerys <laughs> coming out of Daenerys mounting Drogon for the first time, ri- riding out of the pits of Daznak. That's, That's probably cool, yeah. like number one, and that number one is also tied with the Battle of the Bastards, like that entire episode. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Um, Number two, probably, uh, probably Tyrion killing Tywin. Just because before I knew about Tywin's backstory, I fucking hated him. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. He got to kill his daddy. Um, (laughs) And then number three is probably when Jon Snow came back to life. And that's also probably tied with number one. So I don't know. What about you? Um, My favorite hands down, like the one moment, that made me like jump up and shout and scream like an idiot was hard home that whole entire sequence when um john just like when he gets there and then you see all the whites come in and then you see the the white walker and he's like three friends on the top of the hill and their horses <laughs> and then when john fights the guy and he kills him with the uh valerian steel sword that whole sequence i was like an inch away from my tv just like mouth open that was the most impressed I've ever been with Game of Thrones and probably my favorite moment because it was just everything. And then when the, the Night King raises them up again and obviously he does that now iconic sort of come at me snow thing. Hell yeah, come at me, bro. Uh, <laughs> that, that is my favorite, my favorite moment of Game of Thrones. I know it's kind of like maybe a bit juvenile because it's just one massive fight, but everything about it was just nah, like, yeah. holy shit. Like, okay, these guys mean business because they'd only really been teased a bits and pieces up until then. I mean, you sort of really saw them come to the forefront. And that, yeah, that's probably my favorite moment. Hell yeah. I think I agree with you. Like that, that, um, you know, I honestly, when I first started watching the show, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. And I had rewatched it three times and still didn't know half of what the fuck was going on. So when I initially saw that battle, I was like, oh, I don't have to do any kind of looking up stuff. Because before I started a YouTube channel, I didn't even know. I mean, maybe like three or four months before I started my channel, I didn't even know that people actually talked about this shit on YouTube. My only knowledge of something like this was uh, Talking Dead, which came on after The Walking Dead. And I was like, God, I just want to hear someone talk about the show. That's it. And I didn't want to hear all the corny jokes from Chris, (laughs) from the host of the show. I'm like, I don't need any of that shit. I don't want to hear it from your panel. I just want to hear a review on the show. So then someone had told me about YouTube. So then I found Emergency Awesome's channel. And I started watching his videos. Then I found Smokescreen's channel. Then I started watching his videos. And then eventually I decided I want to do do it myself, you know. But honestly, before that, I had I had watched uh, Hard Home and didn't know what the fuck was going on. But I was happy because it was so awesome. Like, that's how badass. You could never have seen that show before and watched that clip of Hard Home. And you're like, holy shit, this is intense, 
You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. It was just one of those. It was just one of those um, larger than life moments. I think the only thing for me that really comes close to that is, and I know it's not really <clears throat> as exciting as most, but the um, the last episode of last season when Cersei blows up the Sept. That original Godfather esque opening. Yeah, the dude, music that music and, is nuts. Ah, oh, dude, that is crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was just like it was so good. <laughs> I used to use that shit as the background for my theory videos until. Oh, same until they claimed my fucking they claimed my videos, so Hell I had to yeah. stop using that music. Yeah. Well, mine oh. they didn't claim they did, they usually claim me for visual stuff. But with mine, uh, I just stopped using it because I noticed that a few other people were. And I'm like, well, you know, I just want to be a little bit more uh, yeah. to my own thing. So I was like, eh, I'm stopped. Yeah, of course. But yeah. it definitely adds, like, especially if you're doing a theory video where there's a lot of tinfoil, it fucking adds to the ambiance of the video. Like, oh, 100%. Yeah, it, makes it, it, it like, like cool, works yeah. perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, um, yeah, we're going to take some questions or something because I've got to actually start hell, wrapping up. Hell, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, uh, for the next three minutes, we will take any questions that come up in the chat, but we will actually be ending it um, right at about 7 o'clock. So if you guys want us to answer any questions personally or if you want to give me some money in the super chat, do so right now because the chat's going to be ending soon. I'm just kidding. But all the money's going to Con of Thrones, so you'll be helping me uh, grab Carice Van Outen's boobies. Hey, look, there she is. Look, Carice is up on the screen right now. <laughs> yeah, she, she's like, I think, and this might be, um, this actually might be controversial, but she's my favorite of the women, like, attractive wise. <laughs> uh, I, like old, I like older women. Even so, yeah. more than me, Sunday? Brother, I love Miss Sunday, but you know, my problem with Miss Sunday is she was on a British show called Hollyoaks. And if there's any UK guys in the or girls in the chat, they know what Hollyoaks is. So I know her as the girl from Hollyoaks, <laughs> and not <laughs> this like super head. mysterious girl. She's like, yeah, she's like this. Thing. So anyway, <laughs> um, and I love Daenerys. Obviously, she's incredible. But there's something about Miss Sunday that just like, yeah, not Miss Sunday, sorry, uh, Melisandre, that yeah, just wins. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. I think number one for me is obviously going to be Amelia Clark, just because I don't fucking know something about the, her body type, body language, body hair, everything, man. I would lick her feet, and I don't even like feet, bro. Uh, and then me Sunday, and then quickly tied, like, right at number two is Carice. And Carice has just got that exotic look, dude, and she's Dutch. So something about her accent makes me think that she's a freak. I don't know why, but something about her accent, I'm like, oh, okay, she's a freak. Oh, shit. That's from you. That doesn't count, Dom. I was like, oh, shit. I thought I'd get the ball rolling. There you go, like, bro. What? It's not much, but, you know. I'll, no, I'll, that's I'll, awesome, dude. Fuck yeah. Thank you. I don't think, I wonder if anybody else has ever had that happen. Like, they're doing a panel, and then someone on the panel <laughs> donates them in chat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a broke bastard. <laughs> Thanks, dude. And that's like euros. So that's like, that's like five bucks over here, bro. How are yeah. you, man? <laughs> um, but yeah, nah, dude, that's crazy. I've only had like three super chats. and then, Oh, man. I feel bad for even bringing it up like that. But thank you. That's awesome, dude. Fuck yeah. Fuck oh, you. good, man. Oh, good. <laughs> um, yes, All right. he does have a he does have a Twitter. It's at uh, the Atomic yeah. Dom, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right. Um, and then I see you... two. Huh? I got a question here. I was just saying, do you think Danny and Danny will like John, like attracted to him? What do you think about that? Um, and that kind of relates to the Lord Flacco. I'm gonna answer both those to Lord okay. Flacco's question, which was, does John, John get, get laid in season seven? Okay. There is no way for them to realistically, in my opinion, develop a relationship between Jon Snow. I think what it will be more of is that they will have such insane scenes together that they'll be attracted to each other. Like It's almost like girls that you work with, or for me at least, I find myself being attracted to girls that I work with, even though I would not normally find them attractive outside of work. But it's because I had a pre-existing relationship when that I'm like, oh, okay, you know. So I think yeah. that that's what it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be like a, a falling in love kind of like with Jorah and Danny, or even how Dario feels about Danny. I think it. I think Jon Snow will get laid, but I don't think it's going to be like how the plot leak says. Yeah, that seems a bit trite the way that the <laughs> the, 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 the plot leak depicts it. Um, he's not bothered about getting laid, man. Jon Snow has to go and fight the Walkers. He's not. He, he, there's yeah, this this lovely. You know, Coochie has come from across the narrow sea. <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. Oh, that's awesome. He said this Coochie. Yo, and that, 
that reminds me, like, it, Jon Snow is probably a furious masturbator, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. come on. Like, that's why he's so he uptight all the time. Doesn't. He, he probably doesn't. He's probably uptight because he beats himself, like, for not beating himself. You know what I mean? He beats himself <laughs> up for no action. Because, like, Jon's too... This is what bugs me about Jon. He's too good. He probably doesn't even have a sneaky, you know... <laughs> but, um, yeah. but yeah, no, I don't know if he'll get laid in season seven. I, I've always said, but I don't think him and Daenerys are going to get on, not at least straight away. So it will be interesting to see how their relationship develops over the course of the season. I think he's, I think he's going to lay himself basically. Like he'll be like, "Winter is coming, so am I." <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you know what would be awesome though? You know what what would be awesome if he does hook up with Daenerys and she's and he does the thing that he did with Egret. Now I'm being, you know, like I'm filtering myself. You know what I'm talking about? I love it when you yeah. do that thing with your tongue, Jon Snow. <laughs> and he goes he goes i don't know i just wanted to kiss you there but yeah what if there's some scene like that with daenerys because we don't think i know cal drogo wasn't about to do that you know what i'm saying dario <laughs> probably did but dario he wasn't was... going that. so that's it actually john john snow maybe he's that's it he's a bit of a freak who knows he could win he could win daenerys that way unless unless podrick shows up <laughs> He's like, he's like, my last girlfriend, she told me I was like a, a magical flute player. So I'm going to go ahead and, speaking of that, me, Sande, and fucking Grey Worm, man. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I don't know how that's going to go down. That's going to be interesting. That's going to be this, interesting. This will be, I think, the last one. Um, okay, so wait, two more. These are the last two. One's from Gecko, and he says, Q&A, are you still enjoying the tube carrier? What does that mean? What? Not, not sure what that means. Uh, <laughs> um, and then the other one is from Sam Silva and he says will the mountain die in season 7 honestly I think he will but I don't want him to what about you the mountain will die this season yeah yeah, yeah I think, I think it's just that. like you know speaking of Cersei I think it's just it's just I don't know it's too convenient to have all these characters live like we haven't really gotten any kind of hints that any of them will be dying in the trailer aside from maybe Littlefinger because he gets hemmed up by Jon but mm. people have to go and the supporting cast is likely not going I mean the mountain's dead already isn't he really Yeah exactly <laughs> exactly yeah. there you go so he is dead trick question <laughs> and you know what the brain is going to work Br I said the brain the brain brain <laughs> the, the blood raven is going to work him because he's dead and he's simple minded and you remember mm. Jamie even makes a point to saying not that he could understand us too much anyway but does he understand us right now and then Kyburn goes he understands enough. So what if Bran wars the mountain? I don't know. That'd be cool. That'd but be I like that. Cool. He goes, he is dead. I like that. <laughs> Maybe that's the only yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's the only way that they can get to Cersei. By Bran warging him and being like, haha. Ah, see, we're dropping we're dropping bombs. <laughs> we're dropping bombs all the way up to the end. Um yeah. Okay, okay, so Gecko clarified. Why are there less and less naked women in the show? Oh wait, no, that was a different question. Um, All right, you're trying to trick us. I think it's you because got to see, you got to see Melisandre's old boobies last, last <laughs> season, and she <laughs> almost tripped over them getting into the bed. She yeah, almost uh... stepped on them when she got out of the shower. That was I'm I'm certain they did that show that that scene just to piss me off because I was like, oh yeah, a bit more. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the fuck, dude? And they even showed like her vagina. You could actually see the crease yeah, of her vagina. Is, oh, I was like, what that's, the that's, fuck? That's, at least they're not as bad as American Gods. Every episode of American Gods, they show full dong, dude. Like, dick and balls. They show all that. I'm like, what the fuck? See, now, I read crazy. that book. I read that book when I was, like, a, about five, six years ago, and I loved it. But, again, the main character from that is from this Hollyoaks show in the UK. <laughs> so, he's, like, he's a Brit, that, um, that main guy. And it's just like, I can't take them serious, serious if I've seen them before in Hollyoaks. So I might gotta, I gotta check that Hollyoaks show out, but I can't Oh, you'll love it. There's amazing looking women in it. You'll love it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Are they naked though? Oh God, no, no. It's like a soap. Oh, shit. Yeah. Hey, ain't nobody got yeah. time for that. Unless they there taking them, them shirts off and I can see them. Never mind. Let me not say that. I'm starting to sound like a showbiz. All right. But yeah, no, <laughs> we're going to be wrapping this up. I want to thank you all so, so much for watching. Um, The one comment that I was going to make that was funny. I forgot about it. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck, what was it? Oh, I forgot. It was something really, really clever. Damn. Oh, okay, okay. No, it was uh, Gecko. He said, how am I enjoying my YouTube career? Uh, You know what? Honestly, once I hit 10K subs, I will be actually going full-time on YouTube. Um, nice. I haven't, haven't nice announced time. that yet, but yeah, I will be going full-time, which means like five videos a week. Woo! I'll get you back, man. Oh, hell yeah. All right, well, yeah. This has been nuts. I can't believe, and I'm, I'm super excited, too, that you guys joined us for this. 
Um, Dom, do you have? Do you want to tell everyone where they can check your check your channel out real quick? Yeah, firstly, just thanks because I didn't think we'd have so many people show up. So I just want to say thank you so much for all being a part of the conversation and joining in. Um, we're all fans here, and we're all just having a go and seeing if we can find out anything from this trailer. So thank you for showing up. Uh, you can find me over at the Atomic Dom on YouTube and on Twitter, and on Instagram it's just Atom Dom. But yeah, just come over. I, I, I make a lot of Game of Thrones stuff. I do other stuff as well, but mainly Game of Thrones. I do a lot of histories about like the Targaryen kings and characters from the books who aren't on the show and theories and stuff. So yeah, if you like it, um, maybe subscribe, and um, I'll see you there. If not, I may see you here another time. Um, he's kind of underplaying a little bit. He does in-depth analysis with fucking editing to a point. They are some of the best Game of Thrones videos on YouTube. So make sure you go click that link down there in the description and subscribe to his channel. If not, House Hunt will come to your house and have sex with your wife slash mom slash stepmom slash sister if she is of age because we don't play none of that shit over here in House Hunt. I want to thank you all so, so much for watching. If you would like to enter my contest for my 10,000 subscriber giveaway and you can win a lovely Daenerys Star Course figurine, all you have to do to enter that contest contest is like this video subscribe to me here on youtube comment down below and hop on twitter and on instagram and follow me my name's mark this has been sir hunts reviews i want to thank you so so much to the atomic dom for joining me and i want to thank you all so so much for watching i think we got up to something like 72 viewers at one point um please slap a like on this video spread it throughout the realm to quote the great uh don tony teflon but yeah uh hopefully you guys enjoyed this and we'll catch you in the next one See you later, guys.